Hold on. There we go. <sighs> Feels good. Feels good to be back at the desk. <sighs> if you're wondering if your friends will hang with you, just remember the OG friend that hung for you. I knew it wouldn't come out right. I knew it wouldn't come out right. I knew it wouldn't come out right. I kn nailed it. Anyways, don't look cross with me. Um, anyways. I knew I shouldn't have said it. Anyways. Hi, chat. All right. I was about to say any questions, but I already have questions lined up, so I don't need questions. Shut up. I'm going to spin my wheel, and then we'll see what question pops up. Ignore the A's. There, there's a placeholder. It actually shouldn't be there anymore. There we go. I made this scene, smiley face. Can you tell how good it is? Jesus crack? Jesus crack? Jesus Christ is cracked. Satan is down bad and sus. Should have asked more questions. You can ask more at the end. Once we get through these. If we even do all of them. I only want to do this for like an hour. I don't want to do this for too long because people get bored. All right. Uh, so sit on your... If you find a new question, just think about it. All right. Let me get this... I forgot I put Arabic music on the wheel. That's my bad. Sorry. Sorry about the very loud Arabic music. That's my bad. All right. Question two is the first one up. All right. Rainbow Kappa says, what's your least favorite retro game system? Now, for those of you that don't know, I have a, uh, hold on, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I have a fuck ton of video games. From the Nintendo, to the SNES, to the PS1, to the PS2, to the PS... I literally have every game system and a bunch of games for it. Um, I really know how to waste my money. If I had to shit on an entire platform... Retro-wise, listen, a lot of people might say the Intellivision, okay? The ColecoVision. Some, are you wearing shoulder pads? No, actually. Negative. I, what? Huh? I think I own shoulder pads. All right. Least favorite, though, this is an easy, quick question. PS1. PS1 is a dog shit. It did nothing to innovate the platform. It has one of the worst controllers in the game. PS2, massive though. I love the PS2, maybe even the PS3, but fuck the PS1. Everyone was out here innovating, trying new things. The PS1 was doo-doo, butthole, dog shit. That's my take. Might be a hot take. Why are your shoulders built like that? I don't know. What do you want? From Move along. This this isn't part of the, the question. It's not related. <clears throat> PS1 is down bad and very sus. All right, next question. That was an easy, quick one. Some will be a lot more elaborate than just like, what's your favorite color? I showed it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. They're built different. All right, next question. Looks like it'll be question 10 or 11. It's 10 or 11. Let me see here. Some sharp shoulders. Ooh, peppermint bork. Your question's up. Don't embarrass the class. Everyone weird champ peppermint if this is a dumb question. Everyone get mad at peppermint if this is a dumb question. All right, there, we need to ban the word sus at this point. Uh, what was your fav what was your childhood toy game to play with? It was the uh, the game I had a blue or no, it was like the purple see-through Game Boy Advance. Um, that you had to have the third party light on it, otherwise, you couldn't see anything because of like glare and shit like that. Now, for a while, I, I, I only played Pokemon Sapphire, it was my first big game. That's why I love Mudkip right here. By the way, can we get a vibe check on Mudkip in the suit and Otto in the suit and Bob the Builder looking classy as fuck over there? Anyways. So, so I had I had the, the Game Boy Advance, and I played Pokemon Sapphire, and I didn't have the backlight yet. So what I would do, because it was too bright in the house to see my game well, 
was I would crawl into the kitchen cabinets beside my kitchen stove and I would put a bunch of blankets and pillows in there and I would just play in the pitch black cabinet like I was like hiding from someone coming to find me but it was cozy like I was never claustrophobic I liked tight spaces when I was younger and then I would know when to get out because it was like a fucking oven well because it because <laughs> it was an oven because it would get really hot because my mom would start making dinner and I'd know it was time to come out of the cabinet and have dinner. So there you go. I played that a ton. I also messed with tech decks quite a bit. I, I collected a lot of tech decks, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Pokemon cards, um, a lot of Hot Wheels. I had hundreds and hundreds of Hot Wheels, collectible Hot Wheels, collectible Fast and Furious cars, uh, lots of RC cars. I don't know why. I just had a ton. I collected a lot of things growing up. But the number one, like, favorite that I, like, returned to a ton was I was constantly playing uh, Pokemon Sapphire. That's why I like Mudkip so much. Mudkip's a cutie. And fuck you if you disagree. That's my uh, hot take. Yes, I was being cooked, basically. Yeah. All right. Already two questions knocked off. Chat, let me know if I'm going too fast and you want me to elaborate more. And if I'm going too long, let me know to go faster. You would be a Hot Wheels kid. I was. I had all the tracks. I had tracks going around my room. Like when you go to a dentist and they have the, the motorized train going around the room. Question eight. This is Lit Maniac. I don't even think he's here in the chat right now. Kind of weird. Lit Maniac. This is a good question. Gamers always want to know. And Lit Maniac would like to know how many times have you raged at a game and broke something? I have. <sighs> See, I thought about re like pre-writing answers to these so it would go a little bit quicker. But I think it's more fun to like see the brain process. What does chat think? Do you think I've broken a lot of shit raging? What would be your guess? A, like from stream and playing it up, you'd probably think a lot, or maybe you wouldn't. I can maybe, yo, fan of Twitch, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Maybe I rarely rage, let alone break anything or throw something. You broke a keyboard. That wasn't out of rage, though. Oh wait, there was that. Okay, there was that one time. Okay, so pre-streaming. Okay, um, there was one time. I was playing my favorite game, Split Second, and my friends came over and wanted me to show them the game, and they came over. And my friend got cocky, but we were on the arcade survival mode, which is bullshit, RNG, doesn't matter. And I'm in my living room, because I lived on my own. Like, right as I turned 18, I got my own four-bedroom apartment, because I'm a Chad who has a suit and a hoodie. True story. And my friends came over and we were drinking, and he beat my ass in the arcade mode. And I was having fun. I was not taking it seriously. I wasn't going to ruin it for my friends. But he talked an unbelievable amount of shit. Tyron, by the way. Can we some weird chance for Tyron? He made it not fun. Because I knew I could whoop his ass if I took it seriously. I knew. I knew. This is my game. You guys know this. I'm top 13 worldwide on the speedrun scoreboards. Anyways, he took it way too seriously. It was shoving my shit on this bullshit mode. And so I said, okay, okay. I propped up and was like, fuck you, fuck. It. Like, I got irate at the way he was, like, he was, like, he made it so not fun. I went, all right, dumbass, all right, dumbass. Go on race mode. Go on an actual race in a racing game. You want to be good at a racing game? Pick a race map. Pick any map, motherfucker. You pick my car and your car. So he does that. And we spawn in, and he's laughing. He's making, he, he, he's giving me shit. I go silent. I go silent for the entire race. I lap him. I lap him in a game with atrocious rubber banding. And end up beating him by like some insane amount. The moment I crossed the finish line, I chucked the controller at my entertainment center. Uh, and broke the glass on the front. This is the only time, we, like, like, I've never gotten mad. That's the most mad I've ever been at a video game. I was more mad at a friend for like ruining the chill vibe. More than anything. Like, I was trying to just relax not take my main game too seriously for once and he immediately made it that um since then 
None at all. There were two times on stream. There was one time, I don't remember what game I was playing, but I, I, cause I used to, if people subbed, I'd break my keyboard. Cause I had just like $22 keyboards from Walmart ready to go. I would buy them in advance so I could easily break them, plug them in, have another one. Uh, not great cost effective, but I don't remember what game it was. There was one time where I actually just broke it over my knee in the middle of the game and I went offline. Does anyone remember what game that was? I can't even remember it. Or what game would have possibly made that mad? Does anyone remember? No, now I have an expensive as fuck keyboard and I will not break it. It's, it's, no. It's an actual quality, not Walmart keyboard. It wasn't balloons. I know it wasn't balloons. This was a while ago, way before I played balloons. I can't remember. Anyways, and then there was one other time when I was playing Crash Bandicoot on stream, which is notorious for being absolute bullshit and awful and atrocious and makes everyone hate their life. And I, I absolutely spiked my Joy-Cons and the pair that I spiked are still broken to this day. Um, they have Joy-Con drift like crazy and usually people say like, oh, it's normal. These were perfectly fine until I spiked them into the floor. Luckily, I have two pairs of Joy-Cons, but yeah, that's why I only use my gray Joy-Cons now, because my pink and green Joy-Cons got spiked into the floor during that day, and they have not worked right since. So there you go. That is the answer to that question. It, it wasn't balloons. J I know James is like building up what Owen said. It wasn't. I can't remember what it was, but it wasn't balloons. Balloons I've only started streaming recently, and I know it was on stream. I can't remember what it would have been. But those are the times I really rage. Like a lot of you would be like, what about that time you did this during Minecraft? Chat, your children, I'm a child. My job is to make you laugh. That makes you laugh, so I'm gonna do it. I'm talking about actual rage. Those are the only ones I can think about it. Those are the only ones I can think about. Yeah, Joy-Cons are very expensive. All right, on to the next question. How you doing today, Bites? See, I'm allowed to ask questions, too. And again, if you guys want to build off these at all, feel free. <sighs> Love beefy auto. Yeah, we're so beefy, dude. Look at us. Look at us. Look at this crew. All right, question 18. Finally, a high roller. Ooh, chat should be predicting on whether... Oh, no, it's question 19. Whether or not the next question will be an even or an odd number. All right, 19. This is Poncho. Is Poncho even in chat? He's not. That's cringe. That's fucking cringe. So beefy. <laughs> Alright. Why are the numbers weird? Why are the numbers weird? Anyways, Poncho wants to know, if Twitch died, where would he start streaming? There's... That would... If there's a mod that wants to run that, they'd have to do it quickly. Because some of these questions go by quick. I guess they can do it as I'm answering this question. Be like, hey, will the next question be even or odd number? Anyways, um, I don't care. If mods want to do that, they can. They don't have to. Uh, what was the question? Oh, if Twitch died, where would I start streaming? Two sides to this coin. One, the assumption is that I would continue streaming. Two is that there is an alternative I would like. Okay? So, if it happened relatively soon... I'd probably hop over to YouTube. But it's more likely if I completely lost my Twitch and Twitch just closed their doors and I had to basically restart and relearn an entire another platform's culture, I probably wouldn't stream. I would go to the next step. I would take, I'm assuming in this hypothetical, I sell my VODs, my clips, some of my highlights that I backed up on the YouTube channel. And uh, I'd go back to radio, which is what I did when I was in high school. I, I, I worked for a radio station. I'd go to the next step of my life. That'd be a good point. It would light a fire under my ass. It'd be a great reason. I, I, whether it's assistant, DJing, simply being a voice, I would, I would start shopping my personality around to any radio station that would listen to me. I, yeah, I would move on from streaming. That would be the universe telling me, hey, you finish this chapter of your life, go take on something else that's kind of similar. 
I'd still have a presence online, like my, my, my Twitter. I'd post some quirky YouTube videos occasionally. Um, like they say in two years, Twitch is closing. Oh yeah, then uh, absolutely the same. I'd put in the time. That way I have this giant backlog of resume. I'd work with as many brands as I can. I'd use that two years to create the most insane content I can, really put my personality out there, yeah. The next step after streaming for me is radio. I, I'd also like to do stand-up one day. Uh, maybe shoutcasting as well, broadcasting. Anything in broadcast I'd like to advance through. Um, yeah, especially in that scenario where I can plan for it, absolutely. Now, if it was like tomorrow, you know, there's little time to plan, I'd probably hop over to YouTube, scrounge up what I can. But it's entirely likely if it just poofed, I'd be like, all right, let's go try radio. I've, I've, I've spent four years talking to a camera. I know I can talk into a microphone nonstop. I can put on the voice. I can talk about this. I can talk about that. I can go on a tangent about every single subject. I have that skill. I can shop that around. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That's probably not the answer people are expecting. They were like, ooh, Facebook, YouTube, obviously YouTube. YouTube's the only one that comes close to Twitch and its culture. But yeah, more than likely, I'd probably take it as a sign to go to the next step in my life. Next question. Chat, will the next question be an even or an odd numbered one? Let's find out. How many questions? I think that was question three we just did. I think we just did question three. Oh, that was question four? I lied. Chat, it laid it on. I'll, I'll say the number and what it is because a lot of you are dumb. 15, an odd numbered question. Ooh, just in time for Luna popping in. And wait, it's going to go off. Yep, there we go. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Luna at Luna wants to know, if you were placed somewhere in the past, which decade would you prefer? So a lot of people ask this question and they f forget a lot of important things. Like how we're... A lot of people won't say this if they're already living a good life. We're kind of living in the best times. No one will have you believe that. We're still living in a not great time, but the bet relatively things are as good as they have been I would argue in some ways maybe not so much but overall you know people are living longer more people are worrying about more people there's more options it seems for more people still not great but better and I think that keeps happening now if we're just going by like cool aesthetics so you don't want to have a boring answer I'd say 80s everyone was fucking coked out of their minds dressing immaculate Oh my god, the fits people had, then yeah, yeah, if we're going just by aesthetic, but if I'm going by like the culture, the aesthetic, like how I would enjoy to live, maybe last decade, you know. This also depends on like, do I, if I go back, do I know what I know now? Can I just like invest in the stock market? If I only go back to previous decade, could I interact with old me or my family? Um, generally, we're living in the best time. A lot of people like have this fantasy that is like, oh, this must have been better. This sucks so bad. We're in the best of times. It's rough still. Things still suck. Absolute horse donger. But we're still higher than we've ever been on almost all fronts. Yeah, that's the other thing where people go like, man, people used to be different. If I could go back, I'd go back to the 70s. I was like, what? I was like, yeah, I, I guess if you were like the, the, the perfect looking white dude, yeah, it must be PogChamp. But like <laughs> for the majority of people, the past was not so hot. Yeah, yeah. People are like, people are violent and there's social problems now. No, it's just easier to document. Like people would have you believe otherwise, but like crime rates have relatively gone down. Lots of things have gotten better. How access to health has gotten better. Forcibly placed in the past. Yeah, I'd go 80s. I'd go 80s. 80s has a dope aesthetic. Everyone was coked out of their minds. YOLOing everything. I loved the way that people looked. 
the way that they dress. 80s. Easy answer. All right. Next question. No, oh, and that's exactly what I said, though. That's that's what I said. I said, still very bad, but the best. Best is relative. All right, 22. I'm feeling 22. Oh, good question. Good fucking question. We have a question from Crispy. I don't know if he's in the chat. Chat, if he's not in the chat, please weird champ him. Crispy wants to know, how is the Yerba Mate? Now, I can sell out all that I want, and I will. It's good. I'm happy. This could have been very bad. They sent me 60 cans of this. If it, if I didn't like it, we'd be in a bad spot. I, I, I'd, I'd be throwing up, probably. I don't like to drink things I don't like. Uh, but yeah, it's good. Uh, I haven't drank much soda at all. I haven't had the, uh, the, the migraines, the withdrawals. I haven't had black coffee in a, a few days, which is usually what I drank before I had all this. Yo, what up, King? Six months, four days. Just missed our anniversary. Just missed our anniversary. All right. Let's see now. All right, on to the next question. Again, chat, feel free to elaborate on these things. Also, don't forget you can still sub and donate, baby. Still be supporting the stream. I drink man milk. That's crazy. Man milk. Right from the titty. Chat, even a rod. Even a rod. I'm already looking at it. Relax. Twenty-five months, Jesus. All right, it was even. Question 26, which is Ishkoman. Listen, I can't, I can't, listen, some questions might seem obvious, but you can't ignore them. We have a lot of new viewers lately. We gotta let them know things about me. This way they can properly guess my social security number. Your tongue is so numb, why is that? Ishkoman wants to know, what is your favorite animal? It is 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 it's auto. It's 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 otters. I love sea otters. I love sea otters to an unhealthy extent. Like I love everything about them. I love the cl the, the they they just break things on their chest. They float on their back when they mate. Instead of floating on their backs by themselves, they fucking hold hands so they never lose their mate. So just two otters just floating around on their backs with their cool tails and their cute faces. And then when it's time to eat, they grab a clam and they just burst them together with rocks. They swim super fast. When they stand up, they're like this. I love the sea otter. They are like the, like the chill stoner of the aquatic world. And that's on Ja. It's true. It's true. I love it. It doesn't get better than the sea otter. The chillest fucking animal in the kingdom. So chill. Chads, even. All right. All right. Odds or evens. Next question. Next question, chat. Are you guys enjoying this? Is this is this content? <laughs> is this content? All right. Chill, Chad Otto. Question number 14, so it's an even number. A lot of evens. It's crazy. Eventually, it should be odd, right? Statistically. All right, question 14. 
Ooh, good question. This one I'm going to have to elaborate on. And it might not be the answer chat thinks it'll be. All right, all right. Anonymous wants to know, what is your greatest achievement? It's a good question. Because if I listed out my achievements and asked chat, you might all say something different. So let me just list out some achievements of mine, okay? Let me list out some achievements of mine. One, I once live streamed a football game to my local town's movie theater where the entire theater, every seat was sold and my state Missouri representative was also in the room, took a picture of it and also shared it. The image of my video feed playing at my hometown movie theater. That happens. Getting to perform on the Walt Disney stage in Florida. My spit is on the stage. Very hog champ. One might also say another great achievement would be getting into uh, the Kansas City Art Institute at 18 after writing a wonderful essay. A wonderful essay. Another one would be winning a statewide media production competition. That's right. I made YouTube videos in high school that won a statewide competition. I won best in show. That's true. A lot of you don't know that. That's another achievement. It's another achievement. Another one, another one is despite my many flaws, my many distractions, my constant ability to procrastinate and quit everything I try, I have done something for four years and not stopped and not quit. Without anyone telling me I had to do it, I woke up every week, well, every day, every week, and I did it. For four years, I have not missed a week outside of December of 2018. College, you might have like professors or parents telling you this. I started it and I did it and I'm still doing it. I'm relatively successful at it and I'm at a point where child me would be proud of me. And that's kind of all I want. That's kind of all I need. I could look for chat's justification of me. I could look for um, role models, parents justification. Um, but child me would be very proud of me today and that's a very important thing to me and why I make the decisions that I do regardless of what others think of them makes me very proud of myself knowing that a lot of people can't say that you change a lot a lot of people make certain sacrifices for certain and different reasons justify it in a different way I have been Trey the last 23 years of my life unapologetically and I have not sacrificed it in any way and I found a platform where I get to be Trey 100% of the day, every day, from May to May, every which way. And entertain lots of people who otherwise might not have shit to watch right now. So, that's my greatest achievement. After bragging, that's, that's my choice. I pick that one. I pick streaming. It sounds cheesy, sounds corny, but it's true. It's true. I've had a basketball game every day tomorrow. What? You had to go to work? All right. See you later, Trinity. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. I'll be back on Monday. At this point, you're just flexing on us. <laughs> the hottest male in Missouri. I'll take it. Yeah, I just had to wait for Bryant to move out. Sage spitting starting at $10. Oh, yeah. I also got noticed in public for a TikTok by a total stranger. I won a Pinewood Derby one time. The trophy is like the size of my head twice. Nice. <laughs> so there we go. I think that was a good answer. I think that suffice. All right, next question. Next question. I hope that was a good answer. Anonymous. Uh, odds or evens, it landed on 23. Okay. Woo! Another crispy question. Wait, what? 
Crispy with his second question of the day. Hold on. Whoa. Whoa. There we go. How to vote. What if it's odds or evens? The mods will have to run predictions. Uh, which I think is just Noah right now. So just at Noah and be like, yo, we want to vote on the next odd or even. <laughs> All right. There we go. Crispy. How was today so far? Today was ass. I'm not going to lie. Uh, this week altogether, uh, my, my bodily chemicals have been off. I don't, I, I don't like to name them cause I'm not smart. I don't know. Dopamine, serotonin, whatever you call it have all been very low this week. And that always seems to happen. I think it's my body freaking itself out, psyching itself out into quitting. Um, because this week, uh, if you haven't been following is just chatting week. Usually I lean on gaming 50% of the time. I also do a lot of just chatting. Um, but this week. I uh, decided to do five whole ass just chatting streams so I could stand on my own, not need a game to carry me. And I woke up every day this week saying I was going to cancel all the way up until 5 p.m. I woke up every day this week telling myself and convincing myself of reasons why I should cancel and why I'd be allowed to cancel and why it should be expected that I cancel every single day this week. I'm glad I didn't. Each day ended up being better because I streamed. It's just hard to know that when you're having a bad day, a bad week even. Uh, but I woke up uh, each day and all the way up until 6 p.m. I was like, I'm going to quit. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell them I'm not streaming today. It's fair. I, I should be allowed to cancel whenever I want. I'm streaming. I, 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 even today, today, I, I woke up at 2 in the afternoon. Uh, I didn't have lunch until like 4 o'clock. I was feeling like booty cheeks, down and out. And I was like, nope. You've already made it four. Just go one more and then you have the weekend. Just knock it out of the park. Get in there. Bring the charisma. Give them a show. Let them know some new things about you. Someone will enjoy it. And then you go offline five hours later. And then you can sleep if you want to. Today's doing better. Overall, meh. But it's doing better now that I'm streaming. And I feel good about not canceling. It's always good. All right, next question. Chat, are you enjoying yourselves? Looks like this one's landing on. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm sweating. I'm a ball of sweat. It gets so hot. The suit hoodie combo. Woo! All right, 21. For all you odd voters out there, 21. Ooh, Callie Saturn's first question of the day. She's got a few on here. Callie would like to know. <laughs> I already kind of answered this in Discord. Uh, do you have any single friends? Callie not here. Kind of weird, champ. Kind of weird. No, I don't. I, I, I don't. And people will go like, well, you have no friends. Um, so I have I have a core group of friends that I had in high school and that I had whenever I moved out on my own and we had video game night every Tuesday. I do though. I have I have Tyron, I have Zach, I have Jenna, I have Bailey, I have Kyle, I have Bryant. God, if I'm forgetting someone, I'm an asshole. I have Thomas, I have Reed. Who some of them I haven't talked to in months, even years, but I still consider great friends. And I know on a dime, you know, if we were in the same state again, we could fucking hang out, vibe out. Um, all of which are in long-term relationships and or married. The one who smashed the controller? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, all my dude friends and even the lady friends are uh, in long-term relationships and or getting married. Uh, Bryant is about to get married in April. Uh, Tyron has been in the Marines in California, so I haven't seen him. Jenna, who's, I, I guess, also my cousin? She's more of my cousin than Bryant, oddly enough. Um, but who hasn't been on stream? Uh, is engaged and is an EMT, I think, also in California. Zach joined the Air Force and went to Florida with his fiance. Um, Reed is engaged. He has one leg, by the way. He used to poke me with his nub. Um... <laughs> 
He went to Arkansas, and he's an engineer now. And good old son is still here in Missouri for you fuckers. <laughs> no, I have not. No, I have not. I did not. No. Bryant is the only maybe cousin I've kissed. Also, again, to clarify, if it makes it less weird, me and Bryant are not cousins. Not that it, I don't know if it makes it less weird for you, but we're not. He used to boat me with his nub, yes. Alright, moving along. I, so no, I, I don't have any single friends. All my friends I still talk to are streamer friend degens like me. <laughs> Alright, odds or evens. Let's see what we land on now, chat. It's spinning. It's spinning. It's looking like it's going to land on... Peppermint's guessing even. Four. All right. Interesting question from Baz. Oh. See if it pops up. Why do you favor Orange Justice over other dances? I don't. I don't. He specified the dance you do for your sub alert. Why not do another dance? The dance in my sub alert is not the Orange Justice. Although it is derivative of Orange Justice, like all art, of course, like all high class art. What you're seeing, my friends, is the Orange Macarena, invented by yours truly. Now, why is it derivative of the Orange Justice? Well, because it is the most stupid-looking Fortnite dance I've ever seen in my life, which meant I had to learn how to do it ironically to make people in my real life laugh. Like, if my mom is talking to my uh, my younger brother seriously, I will I will walk up and just start orange fucking justicing in the middle of the room. It is my favorite thing. I used to do it very ironically, but now I'm oddly good at it. <laughs> And then one day someone asked me to do the Orange Macarena and I, for some reason, or the Orange Justice, and I, for some reason, turned it into the Macarena. Uh, so now it's both. So now it's both. Uh, King, you would be wrong, but I have no way of proving you, so I'll just let you live your life. There's Orange Justice on Trey, Orange fucking in the middle of the room. All right. Twas me! Look at you go. More lore. I didn't even remember that. That's crazy. Alright. Next question. Odds or evens, chat? Odds or evens? How many are there total? We have 32 pre-written, and then I'll do some quick ones after that. How many do we have left? We have 20 left. We've already gone through 12. Cheesing either odd and even. Wow. Good point. Don't forget, chat, media share is always on, and you can also sub. And if we get five subs, we'll do marbles after this. It was odds at 31. All right, who is 31? Bum bum. Ooh, good question, good question. Yeah, we've been at this for 30 minutes now? Yeah, we started at like the 40 minute mark, so we've been here for 30 minutes. So we'll probably do this for one whole hour. And then we'll do some reacts and some gaming after that. There we go. Do you have a lot of serious questions? It's, it's kind of a mix. I just grabbed some that I could have like an answer to. That I knew on this spot I could eventually find some form of an answer. It also depends what people consider a serious question. Like, the achievements question was kind of serious. Um, I almost, I, I keep almost reading. I have the whole wall of questions. I should be taking these off as I go. <laughs> All right. Crispy, I've already done three of your questions. Where have you been? CDRGV, a.k.a. Steven in the chat wants to know, why don't you stream Jackbox daily anymore? Kind of a meme. I never streamed it daily. I used to stream it daily. I used to stream it weekly. Um, there's a lot of reasons. 
a lot of people won't believe me when I say it. You can put a kappa in the chat. But a lot of what I like about streaming is it can be very creatively fulfilling and tickle that creative nub that I like to use. And Jackbox, like several of my streams I do, is not creatively fulfilling in any way. It is 100% selling out. It is free viewership and zero work. I can hit go live, tell people I'm streaming Jackbox, and immediately have 35 viewers. And I have to put in no effort. It is incredibly easy, and for that reason, I hate it. It, it it's, it's so unbelievably easy to get new viewers and new followers with Jackbox. It hurts. I only do it when I literally have no content. When I'm making my schedule, I'm like, man, I have nothing to do on this day. I'll throw in some Jackbox. It's an easy lay. It's a layup. I like to shoot some three-pointers. I like to finesse it. I like to hit the fadeaway. Jackbox is there for the clean, easy layup. Sometimes you got to get them in. But that's why. It used to be fun. It used to be fun, kind of creative, but... It just gets old. It gets old. The jokes are all the same. There's seven packs. I've been playing them since the first... Before they were even party packs. I played them when they were just solo games before the party pack existed. I'm fucking an OG Jackbox Andy. I overplayed with my family, my friends, then stream. Eventually, all the games are just reskins of each other. And for chat, you still find it fun because you don't play the amount that I do. Because I play every Jackbox game I stream. But you're here for like half the Jackbox stream, so you're not over it. I was shooting for four years. Two of those years, half my streams were Jackbox. I've seen all the jokes. I still know it's easy viewership and people love it, but... It's, that's why I don't like to do it. It's easy. It's not creatively fulfilling. It feels like total bullshit. Um, yeah. It's not fun. It's, yeah. This is why it's annoying when people are like, sell out, you're only here for viewers. Dude, I could just put song request and Jackbox in the title and double my views. It's that easy. Maybe throw giveaway up there. <laughs> Which I used to do. I used to do it. Oh, I don't have a problem with streaming Jackbox. I'm saying why I don't stream it. I use streaming always as a creative outlet. And so I like to avoid things that aren't creatively fulfilling. I'll still stream some Jackbox occasionally if I'm looking, you know, for a fun, easy day. But I don't like to seek it out. Uh, it won't interrupt, though. Peppermint, that'll be after this. I don't want to go from this kind of serious setting to react to serious setting. Um, but if you do use channel points to send a video, I will do the videos after this, which this will go for like 40 more minutes. All right. Next question. Odds or evens, chat. Odds or evens. Next question. I'm sweating so much through this suit. It is disgusting. See, 10 hours of... No, it will not last that long. This will maybe go for an hour to an hour and a half. How many hours? Um, roughly half. Because a lot of them were repeats, and some weren't stream appropriate, and some were, uh, incomprehensible. And some I just wasn't comfortable answering on stream, which I think is fair. Uh, there were like 70 questions submitted, and I have a list of 32 that I was like, all right, these are nice and well-rounded. All right, 32. This is the... 32nd question on my list. This is a good question. A lot of you know the answer if you've watched me for more than a week. I'll even ask the chat. Chat? What would that... Alright, can we weird champ Darklight for not spelling would've correctly? Alright, fair enough. It's gonna drive me crazy. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I'll ask the chat. Some of you know the answer. Chat, what would I have been doing... If I never started Twitch streaming, what would have happened? Some of you know. Some of you can tell the others. Some of you are lore masters. You'd be eating nachos. Nope. Navy. Nope. The army. Nope. Place. Nope. Plain military. Yup. 
how does some of you not actually know this? You guys are guessing. This is so sad. Nope. Uh, chat. When I found Twitch, I was at the lowest point in my life. Everything bad that could have happened happened in a series of just two months. I was horribly depressed and ready to follow in my father's footsteps, which isn't a bad thing, by the way. I'm, I'm close to my father. I, I like what he does for work. He gets to do a lot of cool things because of his work. I, I was going to uh, enlist in the Air Force. I was incredibly healthy. I was doing like 50 fucking push-ups a day, running. I was at all-time healthy, and I was like, all right, fuck it. I, I, I have no drive. I have no goals. I have no aspirations. I'm just going to join the Air Force. Fuck it. Because the Air Force, I'll show up, and for four years, they'll tell me what to do. I'll wake up. I don't have to... Because I wasn't ready to be my own boss. I wasn't ready to be an adult. I wasn't ready to be in charge of myself. So I was going to enlist and go, Hey, you, America, tell me what to do every day. Because I don't know what I want to do. I don't want to do anything anymore. And shortly before I was going to enlist, um, my best friends from high school who I had game nights with um, were like, Yo. I heard you just moved back home after all this shit happens. We, our roommate just moved away. Do you want to come live with us in Kansas? Just for the rest of the year. Make some memories before you join the Air Force. And I went, fair enough. I went, fair enough. I will live. We'll have fun for the rest of the year. Sure. 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 Why not? Why not make some memories before doing that? The first day, August 1st. I walk in my roommate, Kyle's room, and he's Twitch streaming. He's speed running. Now, I had seen Twitch before, but I found it incredibly boring. Um, and I didn't see the appeal of it over something like YouTube. And I went to my room, and I got on my computer, and I watched his stream. And five hours later, I watched the entire stream. I was infatuated. I was entertained. I was engaged. It was different. Because I before only seen, like, the top tier just, like, pro players like Shroud just unloading, not doing anything else. Found it very boring. But he was speedrunning at a high level. He was speedrunning Bloodborne. Uh, he was interacting with the chat. Uh, he had all these inside jokes. And I fell in love with it. And I, I went, hey, help me set up a Twitch account. I'm going to try this tomorrow. The next day, my second day in Kansas. I was like, yo, shh, help me out. I don't get it. And I went live, and I streamed for 10 hours. And then I did it the next day. Now, keep in mind, at this time, I was still managing at Dairy Queen in Missouri. So I was driving an hour every day to Dairy Queen, working eight hours, managing, coming home, streaming for 10 hours. I did that every day in 2017. I fucking fell in love with the platform. I had done YouTube before. I had done voice acting before. But nothing like Twitch grabbed me so quickly. I became an affiliate in just two weeks. I hit my first 100 followers in my first month. Uh, now it's been four years. So if I never started streaming, uh, honestly, I'd probably be a Chad right now. I'd probably be ripped out of my fucking mind flying a plane. My, some of you might argue it would be a little bit better. <laughs> So there's your answer. I'd probably be living in Tokyo, ripped out of my mind. <laughs> but I wouldn't fully be me. I probably would have been a Chad. I'll be honest. I probably would have been a, a Chad. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what happens. So I just kept delaying it. And my dad was like, hey, are you still joining the Air Force? And I was like, no. He's like, you just going to do that streaming thing? And I went, yep. Is my dad still in the Air Force? Yep. And he retires this summer. I'm very happy. I'll finally get to see him more than once a year. I'll be able to probably even, you know, see him maybe even monthly. I've never got to do that. I'm 23. Um, I got to see him like three times a year growing up. And since turning 18, I've barely seen him once a year. Um, and I'm close to him. I'm not someone that like hates their parents. I love both my parents, both my step parents. They're great people. They did a good job of raising me. Um, but yeah. My dad's in his 40s. Uh, they had me when he was 18. And my mom was 17. And... I think I was at his graduation ceremony. Yeah. He's a master sergeant now. He's very high level. 
He is a master sergeant in the Air Force, and he's retiring, and he's moving to back to Oklahoma, which is where I used to live and where I kind of grew up, because I would drive from my mom's house in Missouri to my dad's house in Oklahoma, like, every holiday. So now I kind of have that again. I haven't had that. He's been, like, stationed in Texas and, like, all kinds of, like, Italy, very far away places. But, yeah, he's a master sergeant in the Air Force. Big, big guy. Son's dad's a chat. Eh, he ran, so at the age of 38, he ran his first marathon. He's very inspirational. I, I would never tell him this. Uh, but a couple years ago, he ran the New York Marathon uh, almost in his 40s. It was very cool to watch online as someone that's very unhealthy and makes excuses to see my dad, who's smoked cigars all his life and drank, run a marathon and do good. So he was a... So my dad wanted to be... Chat, these are good spinoff questions. Uh, no, I do not. Gelastic Yackles. But there's a room in my Discord where you can promote yourself. It's called Promote Yourself. Anyways, my dad initially wanted to be a pilot. That's why I joined the Air Force. Uh, but they found out he had no death perception in training, which I don't know if you know this. Um, you need you need depth perception to fly a plane. It's kind of important. So they were like, you can't fly a plane, dumbass. My fiance just started doing art streams, and she's looking for people to come possibly ask for commissions and things on myself. Yeah, uh, a lot of people in Discords have promote yourselves. Uh, Twitter's another good avenue uh, to promote those kinds of things. Uh, but yeah, I've ruined my Discord. Uh, it's called Promote Yourself. If you want to join the Discord, exclamation point Discord, you don't have to do that. Uh, but generally, uh, promoting yourself in public chats is very frowned upon for a plethora of reasons. Uh, that's why usually people have those rooms in their Discord. Anyways, um, then my dad was like, alright, uh, I will disarm bombs. And then they found out uh, my dad was colorblind. Which again, you can't exactly cut the red wire if red looks like green. <laughs> He's like, Horribly, like the worst amount of colorblind you can be. Oh no, 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 you're you're fine. No need to apologize. No need to apologize. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wish I wish I wish them well. I wish your fiance well. Bombs and colorblind. Yeah. Uh, so they just became a drill instructor. So when I lived in Oklahoma, I went to Tinker Air Force Base. I lived on the Air Force Base. The planes would fly 20 feet above our heads. They'd shake our home. Every hour on the hour, I get to see all the planes. I get to meet everyone. You get to see the new recruits uh, getting, like, heckled around base. See everyone saluting my dad was a very weird feeling. And you remember that Game Boy Advance I told you about? My dad sometimes, like, uh, I'd be, like, sick from school, and he'd take me. And I'd sit at the back room on my Game Boy Advance playing Pokemon, watching him, like, yell and be a drill instructor. And I remember some of the recruits would, like, sneak to the back of the room and talk to me about Pokemon. It was so cool. Because they had these, like, tall fucking ripped chads and these military wear. And I was, like, super intimidated. But they'd come back and nerd out about Pokemon. I thought it was so cool. They'd be like, yo, you got Mudkip? I'm not... It was so cool. I was such a little kid. They were so nice about it. I was like, yeah! Mudkip! And then Dad would yell at them for being distracted. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if it makes it sound even weirder, chat, uh, my dad is an inch shorter than me. And a healthy weight, so I am larger than my father. Sucking up to the boss's kid, exactly. My dad is a short man. And a drill instructor. But yeah, he's a master sergeant now. He's been very recognized. He finally gets to retire. He did four years in Italy. I thought you say that like 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 in Afghanistan. No, it was, he lived a great life in Italy. Uh, the last four years, he's been in San Antonio, Texas, which I love visiting. I think it's really nice down there. Great food. Who gonna say anything about it exactly? All right, that was a good question. We let good good question. Darklight, even though we misspelt it. If you see Darklight, make sure to give him a clap. We were on that question for like ten minutes. All right, Shroomamu, hello. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, my young, or uh, not my youngest half brother, my oldest half brother, who's like six, speaks fluent English and Italian, already way smarter than me. Which is why I have to curb stomp his ass. Whenever I see my fucking half brother Gavin, I immediately, he'll be like, he'll wear a Pokemon shirt, and he'll be like, 
I'll be like, what's on your shirt? And he goes, it's Pokemon. And because I'm old, he's like, you wouldn't know. And I'm like, hey, dumbass. Let me teach you a thing or two. And then he respects me. He's like, you know Pokemon? You know Zelda? You know, you know Mario? I'm like, yeah, motherfucker. I played Mario before you even were born. He's cool, though. He's cool, though. He tries to gatekeep me, though, on nerd shit, and then I have to check him. I have to be like, I'm 23. These things are older than you. Don't be written. Mm -mm. My family is sarcastic and, and, and snarky as fuck. It's in the DNA. All right, on to the next question. Chat, odds or evens? I'll start working with my half-sister soon. Me? Yeah, I have an older half-sister than I'm the oldest of me and my two brothers. I have a younger half-brother, a youngest half-brother, and a youngest half-sister. So, a few siblings. A few. All right, next question. Odds or evens? I hope this is enjoyable to somebody. I hope something's learned. The Suncracker Wikipedia page could use an update. This will this will be an easy YouTube video. I just upload the whole thing. Sons tell all. Maybe some minor cuts. It's even again? It's 12. It's question 12. It's even again. Okay, so we had a serious question just now, but now we've got a bit more of a silly question. Cypher wants to know, what is your toilet paper orientation? Um, so I look at the toilet paper thing. It's empty. I see, I see, I see the empty roll on the rod. Yes. Yes. I take the new toilet paper roll and I set it on it. And then me and my family passive aggressively wait for someone to finally put it on the roll. Until ultimately, the roll on the roll runs out, you throw that away, you grab a new roll, you set it on it. Set it on it. Left side, right side, paper down or up. I don't think, Luna, do you know what I'm saying? It's not on the roll. We're too lazy. And also, there's like a billion people that live here, so we go through like a roll a day. So it's never worth. The roll that's on the roller has probably been there for a year now. Because we all just grab a new roll and place it onto the old roll. Like, this is the roll. Like, it's this way. And we just place it. Now, if I'm not feeling lazy and I want to put it on the roll, you know, obviously the paper's facing me. I'm not a psycho. It's not facing the wall. Obviously. That would be lunacy. Obviously, the paper's gonna face me. I go over, not under. Once it's on the roll, yes, it must go... Yeah, there's no benefit to it going under. That's crazy talk. Are there two on the back of the toilet? That is confusing. Next question. Over and wrong. It's like there's only two types of people. People that pee in the shower and liars. It's crazy, I know. <laughs> yeah. I've never met anyone that defends the under, though. I think it's just usually like they just never look at it. They don't care enough to look. Ooh, Callie Saturn's question. Um, She said this was a meme question she didn't want submitted. Uh, but because she's not here, because she's on a date with Tex, uh, I'm allowed to use the question. And Callie cannot stop me. So, we're going to use it anyways. And no one should tell her I used her question. Who pees in the shower? Me, smiley face. Preach! There's two kinds of people. People that like pizza and liars. It works for so many things. <gasps> my Yerba. I forgot I ate Blue Foria Yerba over here. Oh my god. Tex is on a date? Yeah, it's 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 time enough he found someone. <laughs> David, you almost made me choke on my, my Yerba. That would have been a waste of Yerba. Have I mentioned Yerba? Yerba? <laughs> Alright, question 16. 
Callie would like to know. Callie would like to know. Hi, chat. This mean that this is what it looks like normally before the CGI comes in. I'm just a man in an empty studio. It takes a lot of work to make this look like this. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of good work we put in here at Sun and Sons LLC. Callie would like to know. Fuck Mary Kill, Teal, Hollow One, Shirtless, Pumpkin, and Brewhouse Games. Now this this is a good question. It's been asked since the beginning of time, the dawn of time, some would say. Um, but I must answer it. It must be answered. Callie needs to know, apparently. Kind of weird that Callie needs to know. Here's some weird chance for Callie. They need to know this. Now. Now, let me, let me look through here, okay? Who are these people? <laughs> Show us how much David has watched the channel. Teal is the dude that's in Hawaii right now on vacation that I've been playing uh, It Takes Two with every Friday and who I called disgusting once. Shirtless is my cousin who has kissed me twice, once with tongue, uh, and who I stream uh, Halo with once a week and who I've also done other streams with in person. Brew is one of my older friends in the platform who's like the dad version of me. Very adult, has children, plays similar games. So with that in mind, chat, I see me. Oh no, 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 no. Callie asked it, bro. I can't I can't stop the people. This is the Suncracker Tell All stream. Okay? Listen, this is this is more personal now. I wish you hadn't been here for this. So let me walk you through it, okay? Logically. Shirtless chat is getting married. So I can't marry him. I'd be fucking up the marriage. And I'm a best man there. I want to be a best man. Me and Brian made a deal. We have to be the best man at each other's weddings and speak at each other's funerals. So I can't fuck that up. I can't be the best man at me and Brian's wedding, so I can't marry him. He's my cousin also. So Brian's off the deal for marrying. We move to Teal. Teal's too much like me. I'd learn nothing. We're both bronies. We're both absolute degenerates. We're both... As Suncracker once said, disgusting. So, I don't think there's a lot of redeeming, but Brew, Brew has that bear-like quality, that papa bear. I feel like I could be a DJ until I'm 80 and he just, head pet, just a nice head pet. Here you go, you dumbass. He'd bring in a beer occasionally. He'd support me in my endeavors. He'd be my big spoon. Chat, if TwitchCon happens this year, Brew is absolutely going to hold me like this. It has to happen. I have to get a hug from the Brewski man himself. So I'm marrying Brew. All right. I'm sorry mama needs a nap. I'm marrying Brew. So you're going to fuck Teal? Whoa, whoa. Don't get ahead of me. Do not get ahead of me. Do not get it twisted. Chat. I can't, I can't kill my best friend. I can't kill Shirtless. And there's only two options left for Shirtless Pumpkin. And that's to kill him or the only other option left. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it, but I don't want to kill him. Do I want to kill him less or fuck him less? I think I want to kill him less than I... That's an interesting spot to be in. So we're marrying Brew. We're unfortunately, I'd rather not, fucking Shirtless. And uh, Teal just has to die. I'm sorry. I've, I've known him the least amount of time. You know, I'm sure he's great in the sack. Maybe not. Uh, me and Bryant are already at second base. You know, I know what to expect. A lot of forced kisses. Um, Teal's dead. I'm sorry. I had to kill. I had to kill Teal. I know it's his birthday, apparently. Um, Teal's dead. So thanks, Callie, for asking that awkward question. Totally seriously, obviously. <laughs> All right, chat. Odds or evens. Next question. Brew just had to pop in right then. Exactly. <laughs> Don't spam it in Discord, but yes, you should place it in Discord that I just murdered Teal. He's on a vacation in Hawaii. He, he can take it. He can take the stress. 29. We've got 17 questions left. 
This is a Peppermint Bork question. I believe it's his second. Do you have any more questions? I think so. It's hard to tell with the format I have. You thought you were gonna be killed? Listen. Listen. I've only known Teal for like a month. And all I know is 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 our marriage and it takes two and it's on rocky water. Me and Teal have already decided to get divorced. And we've been playing a marriage simulator for the last month. So I already know what to expect there. Alright. Peppermint Work wants to know, can you tell the Zune story? A lot of people don't even know what Zune is. All the Zoomers in chat. Ping me on Discord, please, Owen, if another Cali or Luna question comes up. Okie dokie. Zoom, not Zoom. Chat, Zoom was just invented. All right, don't be weird. Zoom, okay. Zoom is Microsoft's competitor to the iPod. Fun fact, Microsoft has their own version of the iPod, who's much less successful. And so back to my father, you know, who I was just talking high and mighty about i now need to bring him down a few pegs you know i've talked him up too much zoom is 10 years old okay this story is older than that. it still applies it still applies all right so anyways uh when i was i think in eighth grade i was like 12 or 13 maybe i can't remember um, maybe not in 8th grade, it was like 12 or 13. And my father took me and my brothers, my babushkas, we were gonna go vacation in Colorado, and we were gonna road trip it from Missouri to Colorado. I don't know if you know this, but the drive in a straight line from the east side to the west side of Kansas is incredibly boring. It's a perfectly straight line, and there is nothing but corn and wheat and windmills. It is perfectly flat. There is nothing. Nothing. And I'm at the age of 12 where I need stimuli. And we are driving, I think like 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 13 hours across the entire state, edge to edge in one day. That was my whole day. See, Illinois isn't as wide as Kansas though, you know? You can make it from side to side a lot quicker, you know? Maybe even dance in some other states. Anyway, so we, we, we hop in the SUV and I'm in the middle row. Uh, with, I think, Ethan beside me, and then Alex is in the back row with Gavin. Because my other half-siblings hadn't been born yet. And I can't sleep in cars. It's impossible. Chat will tell me a billion different ways. I've tried all of them. I cannot. Cannot. I could be exhausted. I cannot fall asleep in a car. And so I'm incredibly bored. And uh, my iPod dies, and my Razor, my pink Razor Motorola phone dies. Because you had to have both back in... <laughs> pisses Chet off when I act old. Back in back in the day, yeah, they have a phone and an iPod. It's crazy. Um, and my dad was like, yo, you can use my Zune. Uh -huh. So he hands me the Zune and I put in my headphones and I'm playing music from his playlist. And some of the songs have music videos. Okay. Some of the songs have music videos that autoplay. Spotify has a similar feature nowadays. And there's a song that comes up. I'm sure you've heard it where it's like uh, every sound you make in between the sheets. Something like that. Okay. I don't remember the name of the song, but I don't remember thinking it was sexual because as a kid, you just like the sound of music. And I never thought it was a sexual song, but it starts playing. There's a music video. And as he's saying in between the sheets, there is a woman between the sheets with massive bahonkers, gazungas, big mommy milkers. Bogungas, Bagangas, Tadangas, Booba. You know, the thing. And I'm like 12. And I have struck gold. I've got 10 hours on this trip. The Zune is fully charged. And you know what do I do? I kick that song to repeat. I don't know what to do with this information. It doesn't get... I just... I just, for like the next eight... Yeah, it's addicted. Yep. For eight hours... You learn why specifically eight hours in just a moment. I just play this video on repeat. I don't have to do with the information I'm taking in. I'm just boob. I know I want to look at the boob. I don't know why I'm looking at the boob. I don't know what to do with it, but I'm looking at boob. 
Booba. Respectfully, Booba. And then it and then it goes black. And I realize it died. Um, and when you turn off a dead product, it immediately loads up what you were just looking at. And I asked my dad for the charger, and he said that means uh, you're done using it. You, you don't need to use it more if, if you use the entire battery. You should be good now, boredom, Andy. Um, and so I like to think about how my father showed me my first pair of boobs accidentally, and how he knows that and I know that, but we've never talked about it. One day he'll watch my stream and he'll find out. But that's how I f saw my first pair of boobs. That is how. I wasn't even seeking it out. I got flashed by my father. <laughs> On his Zune. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. That is the Zune story. A good retelling. A dramatic retelling. Then I learned about porn? Nope. That's a, that's a different story we could tell later. Well, con you, whoa, 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 you can't ask that now. You should... Uh, 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 Americana. Uh, odds or evens, chat. It's right on the line. Oh, it's between two evens anyways. Question 20. My fist was a Channel 13 doc video of testing for breast cancer. Oh, your first. I thought, okay, your fist. I was like, what? It's a very different thing to say with your fist. How many of your questions? I think we've had two of your questions, Steven. Why does the five look quirky? Oh, boy. <laughs> all right. All right. Lord would like to know, what do you want to accomplish the next one, five, and ten years? All right. The next one year. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. Especially with this move happening, for those of you that don't know, starting uh, May, I begin the process of fully having an apartment. Hopefully by the end of May, it'll be moved in. And content will go through the roof because I may have had an apartment when I started streaming, but I only had my one room. And so it was my bedroom and my studio, just like it is now. Um, even though I had a bit more freedom living with younger roommates, uh... You know, I don't know what I don't know about what I know now about content. But by the end of May, I will have a three bedroom apartment basically to myself 24 7 to turn into content. It means more cooking streams. I can stream longer because I won't have to worry about waking up my relatives who have 6 a.m. jobs. Um, so more content, more creative content, more room to work, more cooking streams, more IRL streams, PP cam, poopoo cam, maybe even. Uh, so I'm very excited. I'm very excited. And with that, I believe by next May, I, I'll be partner. I'll be partner. I gotta be. But if not, I'm doing something wrong, and I require some self-reflection. But currently, with a stable base of roughly 20 average viewers coming in and out throughout a stream, and one year of having space, new ideas and growing quicker than we have in the past next one year that that is my goal that is what they all say so jolly crap i have only just now said that i've been streaming for four years my goal has never been to be partner chats always wished it for various reasons i've never went for partner i've never cared to this is just silly and i'm happy to be where i am but that is a goal that makes sense given where i'm at Given where I'm at, if I continue this rate, reaching out the way I'm reaching out with this base and a year of having quadruple the space I have now, actually being able to have a whole studio rather than the bedroom in there, I think it's very achievable. I think it's very achievable. Which is a good thing you should have goals. A lot of people make goals their dreams and that's a stupid thing to do that's going to shut your ass down. A lot of people equate goals to dreams, and you shouldn't do that. Goals are little, like, milestones on the way to your dreams, but they shouldn't equal the same thing. I think it's a very achievable thing. It'll still require a lot of work, a lot of stress, a lot of time, a lot of hours poured in. But I think that is a healthy and realistic goal uh, in the next May to May. Uh, the next five years. In the next five years, out of Missouri. In the next five years... 
out of Missouri. That's very basic, I know, but financially stable from streaming or content or whatever other content I do. Maybe I've moved on to stand up, um, yada, yada. In the next 10 years, I hope to have quit streaming and gotten to radio and gotten to stand up and gotten to voice acting because there's a lot of things I want to do. But next one year, simply uh, become the best I can be on Twitch. Reach out to the most people. The next five years, new environment, new financial stability. Next 10 years, broadcast, broadcast, broadcast. Stand up, shout casting, voice acting. Just out of uh, all their press partner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hours and days are very achievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Currently, if I do the right streams, the right sellouts, I can average 20 to 30 viewers. You know, we've got some new shows coming. We've got Chat Knows Everything, Day at the Races, the World Record stream, which is finally going to happen. Uh, streams like this, you know, it, it's achievable. It's an achievable goal, which is important. And yes, I know everyone says they're going to get partnered. I've been streaming for four years. I've never tried to go for partner. I think that is a realistic thing that I can accomplish. I bet a 24-hour stream would bring people in. Oh, of course. Shh, don't leak. Don't leak. Listen, chat. I'm talking hot tub streams. I'm talking longer streams. I'm, dude, chat. Without having my bedroom being my studio, like, the space. I'm not joking. When I'm saying there's going to be a lot of dumb shit happening in the studio. Because right now, this room is also my bedroom. It's also my parents' house. There's a lot of limitations. We take the training wheels off by the end of next month. I'm just telling you. Blowing up fruits and shit. Playing with dry ice. Science experiments. Making giant volcanoes. Losing the, the deposit on my apartment. Any percent run. Yeah. Alright, next question. Good question, by the way. Claps and chat for Luna. So actually, also, that's another thing, Peppermint. The internet will be better. Um, I'll still be in this town, but this town just got a new tower with the same company I'm already with. And the new tower offers 100 down, 10 up. Right now, I'm operating 20 down, 5 up. This new tower is 100 down, 10 up. And I'd be the same distance I am now from this tower. I'd actually be closer. So right now, I'm one block from this tower. I'm literally moving to the other side of town to live by this new tower. I'm such a Dijon. Brew, how long have you been here? I live, listen, I pay 130 a month. It is the best internet money can buy. This is why I'm waiting for Elon Musk to make Starlink, which will put internet like that out of business and they have to innovate. Yeah. Up until this year, that was the best money you can buy. I literally reached out to every satellite company that exists. This is why I lose so many frames and I'm so inconsistent. Because, bro, if it went, if wind blows and this tree out here sways just in front of my satellite dish, it goes out. Yeah, when I started streaming chat, I streamed 1080p 60 FPS. You want to know why? When I started streaming in Kansas, my internet was only 80 a month and it was 300 down, 30 up. Oh my god. Your IRL stream was so clear. What happened? Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm not sure Fire Ice. We've gone through like 17, so maybe? I'm not super keeping track. All right. Uh, next question. That's the cheapest where you live? Oh, Maron. See, I have the annoying thing. I have 20 billboards down my road that are like, blazing fast speeds of the future. And you go to their website and it's five down, one up. I'm not joking. 90, there's, there's four options here. Three of them offer five down, one up. That's what the majority of my community uses. If you wanna know why a lot of Americans be living very different lives, there's just one example. <laughs> It pisses me. Blazing fast speeds of the future. Five down, one up. That's blazing fast. 
It's insane to me. Alright. Ooh, I don't have to change the name. It's another Luna question. Yeah, I got a one-up. A whole five. Yeah. Still have trouble loading up solitaire. <laughs> Luminescent Luna wants to know... If you met a genie, what would be your three wishes? No unlimited wishes. All right. Chat. I'm not a man who likes a lot of stuff. You know this. My first two and a half years on this platform, I ate exclusively frozen chimichangas. Didn't have to. For every meal. I, if I could ha have all my food just in one drink once a day, I would. I don't, like, I don't care to splurge on foods. I don't eat out that much. Like, even now, I moved from those chimichangas because they weren't that healthy for me. Now I have one healthy choice bowl per meal twice a day. That's it. Once a week, I go to the store. I buy, like, 20 of them. I put them in my mini fridge. And then when it's time to eat... Yeah, I've had people tell me that, Wes. I've had people tell me that. Yeah, text... I, I, I've heard mixed reviews of it. And they don't sell it here. That's where I fucking live. You cannot buy it. I'd have to get it shipped here. Um... But yeah, I very much live under my means. I don't want a lot of things. I want a lot of things for stream, though. Like, when I get extra money, you guys know this. Like, if I show you my room right now, my room is garbage, but my stream setup, it's all, like, high-tech as fuck. But my bed is still the mattress from middle school, the blanket from middle school, the pillows from middle school. I'm still eating the same food I ate four years ago. Fucking, yeah. Same green screen I bought in the sixth grade. So anyways, if I met a genie, what would my... Th With all that in mind, I've had the same shoes for three years. I really don't care to splurge. If it's not broken, I will not buy anything. It's not even like I'm stingy. Like, I will splurge on things that I care about. But my priorities are different than you. Like, the bed is still comfy to me. I genuinely still find the pillows comfy. I'm vibing. I'm good to go. I'm not going to go through the stress of seeking out something new if it's still... My, this is an iPhone 6, by the way. Let's clarify that. This is an iPhone 6. The new iPhone is the iPhone 12. <laughs> and I just upgraded. I was just on the iPhone 5. Anyways. Anyways. So my priorities are different. I only care about content and entertaining strangers throughout the world. I want to make people laugh. Why replace when not broken? Exactly. Why say lot word when few word do trick? So, but Medigini, what about my three wishes? One, financial stability. You know? That's simple. It's very minor, especially where I live. It's very, you know, easy to live. Uh, the apartment I'm getting is three bedroom, and get this, is only 400 a month because. So a lot of you go, wow, that's cheap. But just remember, there are only three restaurants, half the town is a cemetery. And the best internet is 130 a month for 20 down, 5 uploads. So just keep that in mind before you go, Whoa! I would pay that and get one room in California. So simple, never having to shill for donos or subs again. Because I do feel bad about it. But like, I am trying to live and make the most content I can without having to make sacrifices. So yeah, simply never having to sell it on stream again. I would want that, yeah. Yeah, if Mr. Beast came in here and donated 10k chat, I could live off that for the next 10 years. I'm not joking. And still be able to stream for you. It'd be that simple. So boom. Like literally just be like, yo, I would ask the genie for a 20k a year salary, which is not a lot. You don't know why? Because I want to keep that scuff. Life's interesting when you're scuffed. When there's a fire under your ass, you're interesting. Life is interesting. I don't want to be polished. I don't want to be clean. I don't want to be like top dog making seven figures a year i'd be so boring nothing interesting happens to rich people oh my god i want to be just where i need to be just a 20k a year i would ask the genie for a 20k a year salary to stream six days a week that's it that is all i want wish number two i want to live to 200 i don't want to live forever that seems that's too much but 200 would let me see like I love space travel and exploration. I think to live to 200, you'd see some insane technology. Or the end of the world, which are both interesting. I either want to see the end of the world 
or dope ass colonies on Mars. I'm so fascinated by space exploration. I would love to be able to like know where it goes. Not past 200 though. Oh my God, that sounds terrifying. End me at that point. But 200, just give me a second lifespan. Wish number three. God, I'd love some fat knockers. You know, so I'm having a bad day. I just look in the mirror and I... So I think that's it. I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, it, chat, if I made a lot of money streaming, like a lot of money streaming, I'd probably give away 90% of it. it. That'd be so much fun. I'd just spend all day. That'd be great content. It's what Mr. Beast does. He gives away all the money he makes. i just go like, all right, I'm going to buy this five-year streamer a Lamborghini. Yeah, that seems funny. Money, space, and boobs. Yeah, I'm a simple man. <laughs> yeah, I want just enough money to live out what I want to do, but not enough that I lose my touch, my edge. I want to be able to see space travel deep into the future. And I want some titties. Is that so weird? All right, next question. You have edges? I do. Look at these shoulders. They'll cut diamonds. <laughs> Do I have 20 viewers? What the hell? Are you guys enjoying this? Apparently. Big old ditties. <laughs> Some booba. Dude, it'd be the number one hot tub stream on Twitch. I'd be wearing this suit. No hoodie, though. Knockers out there. Live for 200, have tits, and just enough money. Yep. All right, question five. Ooh, another good question for new people. See, that's the other fun thing about streaming, is it's a constant creative drive. So this week chat was fun, but I don't get to reflect on it. The moment this stream is done, I have to start planning five more streams for next week that are better than this week, so we keep growing. Literally. I, I won't be watching clips from this. I have to immediately be like, all right, what's the next show? I'm gonna look at analytics. I'm gonna go like, all right, is Minecraft still on the menu? Do just chat still want Minecraft? It seems like people really like this type of stream, but if I overdo it, they might no longer like it, and thus the long-term effect. Nope. That's literally my weekends. I overthink streaming way more than anyone else, I think. And I don't need to. There's no reason to. Chat doesn't care about 90% of the decisions I make, but I still do. I still overthink streaming like crazy. It's such a beautiful creative drive. I immediately, at the end of this week, I have to go, all right. Yeah, I could just, yeah, I'll just play Jackbox for five days. Yeah. Easy. What jobs did you have before streaming? All right. Chat, can you see all my jobs I had before streaming? Any chatters? I'm saying all my jobs, though. A lot of you will all remember, like, the big ones. Okay. So... When I was a young boy, I was 17. I was in media tech class and I made dope fucking videos. So much dope videos that when my media tech teacher got a $40,000 grant to upgrade the class, that's right, a $40,000 grant for a media class in a small town in Missouri, she went to me and my friend Jordan, gave us the money to spend for the class. Because we had superseded her in our knowledge of all these programs we were learning to edit with and the cinematography methods we were learning. I'm not joking. This wasn't the job. This is just like explaining this. And so there was this local videographer who does this like hunting TV show. And he came to her and he was like, hey, I need a couple student hires to help me film this ballet recital. I'll pay them. 150 bucks each. They just have to hang out for the day, film two recitals. And she, very cool feeling, she immediately picked me and Jordan. Jordan couldn't show up, unfortunately, but I got to go and uh, use a top-of-the-line massive like they use for the news camera. Way outside my pay grade. Because before this was before we even got the grant, so I was used to using these little dinky camcorders. And suddenly I had to wake up at 6 a.m., and he was showing me how to use this massive, massive professional-grade camera. It was so much fun to learn on the job. Um, 
it was me, a college student, and him that were filming it. Very cool. And uh, so I did that. And then the next year, my senior year, or no, my junior year of high school, I was still in this media tech class. And a radio station that is hosted an hour away from here. Because my football team, I don't know if you know this, even though I live in a small town, um, at one point had the national record for most football games won in a row. We had went six seasons without losing a game. And we were we were like the number one ranked class two. Which class two isn't that great. Um, but we were smashing records like crazy. Well, we were going to state every single year. Massive fandom. And the radio station wanted to pay some people to live stream the football games nationwide. They, they saw that niche. And so the local people that broadcast our football games reached out again to the teacher and were like, yo, we need a couple students to understand technology and streaming. This is before I ever knew about Twitch uh, to run the camera equipment and run the computers. So me and my friend Jordan, uh, we got to travel with the radio station all across Missouri, along with the football team, because every, I mean, all across Missouri is not that exciting, but literally, if you've been in Missouri, I've probably been in your town. Um, and we would run the cameras and the computers. We got to meet a lot of people, hanging out in the booth, the energy, seeing the announcer five feet to my right, screaming over the microphone as we scored another touchdown, the energy of the pre-show, my my intro to my stream, uh, like the music, the ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, get yourself ready for another sun cracker stream. That is based off that experience. The chills that I got every day watching the team run through the gate, the music blasting, the crowd going up. I loved the spectacle of it. And I try and recreate that. That's why my intros are so elaborate. People get annoyed by and they say it's too long, too overdrawn, start the stream already. That's for me, because it gets me so hyped to like remember that feeling um and so that was my second job i did that for two seasons had a lot of fun and then they ended up deciding to go with people that worked with them they wanted oh also those average 600 viewers my town at my 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 high school uh each graduating class is 100 people yeah and then the state game my senior year they showed the the state game that i was filming on our theater stream which we've already shared today and it was very cool seeing my entire hometown back where i live now watching me i, I thought that was very cool or watching me film um and then uh i got a job at dairy queen as soon as i turned 18 they made me manager i worked there for five years then i moved to kansas and had to get a job there because i was tired of driving an hour every day while also doing 10 hour streams and so uh, I got a job at Little Caesars. It was weirdly fun. I got to see all of the drug addicts I could ever see in life selling $5 pizzas on the bad side of town. It was fantastic. I was manager immediately. Um, then a year later, they shut down the entire store the day of Thanksgiving, no warning, and told us we were fired. And on that day, I went, okay, I have to move back to my mom's house, which is where I've been since then. Um... And I fully did live streaming. Since then, I've done live streaming as my main source of income. I didn't get on the job. I went, all right, as soon as I get the internet up in this bitch, I'm live. I'm live. And chat took care of me. Chat took care of me. Well, I'd already had five years manager experience, so I was good to go. Um, I had a couple other job offers. I was going to do management at GameStop, but they ended up uh, not calling me back before then. They called me back after, but I was already good to go. Um, and then about a year ago... I was like, oh, I would like some extra money to spend on stream stuff, so I got a job delivering pizzas. But I only did that for six months, and then I was just like, all right, well, this is taking away from uh, streaming. It's stressing me out. I need to drop it. So yeah, that yeah, that was just like six months. I was like, yo, I'll deliver some pizzas three days a week for some extra money. That was fun. I had to see a lot of weird people and how trusting people are. A lot of people let me into their houses Got chased by a lot of dogs. Got offered a lot of drugs. <laughs> all right, next question. Those are all my jobs. There you go. Luckily, even though I'm a small streamer, small streamer, 
Uh, my community's insane, and they take care of me. So I've done this full time since Little Caesars. Uh, no comment, Owen. No comment. <laughs> All right, we have like ten questions left. Any egg chips? Yep. Yep. Halloween was a great day to deliver. Uh, great day uh, and horrible. There was no towel to drop. They were just, you know, having a drunk Halloween party, and they happened to be naked. All right, next question. Radio's dying? Ah, it's changing. It's not dying. Podcasts are massive. Streamable, long-form content is growing like wildfire. It's true form. It's original form. Yes, obviously. AM, FM radio is dying. Absolutely. But as everything in media, it will evolve or die. It's adapting, yes. It's adapting like crazy. You should do a podcast. I have several ideas for podcasts. It's just, uh, you know, there's a lot of projects I want to do, especially with Bryant. There's two podcasts I want to do with Bryant that will fully, it'd be Trey and Bryant. It won't be Suncracker and Shirtless. It'll be Trey and Bryant having a podcast. I think that'll be fun. There's a lot of adventures I want to do once I have more free time and more space. Uh, 27. Rainbow Kappa. This is a good question. Hard to make unique ones? Yup. Yup. It's a very oversaturated market. But if you can break through, it's a good gig. But again, I already do it. I already talk six days a week, five hours a day. Or five, five, five days a week, five hours a day. Setting aside one bonus hour, even if the podcast never gets picked up by anybody. That's already what I do. It's just one, like, I already do a podcast 25 hours a week and then I just have to sit apart to say one extra hour to do this extra project alright Rainbow Cap wants to know what was it like when you got your first fan art I think I cried cause it was uh, only one month uh, I did YouTube for 10 years never got an audience could never get anyone to watch me I, I made music for a couple years. Never got anyone to listen. I did voice acting for three years. I uh, got two gigs. One of them they paid me, but ended up going with someone else. So I only ever had one gig, and it was one episode and one line. So when I came to Twitch and saw how welcoming everyone is, and how much I fell in love with the platform, and in less than one month, I had fan art, it was in, I got chills. I had worked so hard to cultivate my own community and find people to entertain. I, I got chills. I realized I had an impact. I finally, after for 10 years talking to no one, trying to make anybody laugh, trying to just entertain someone in any way, to have that so quickly, I immediately got affiliate, my first 100 followers. Immediately I got memes, I got fan art. It was a it was a major feeling. It was it was insane. I went from working so hard for so long for that to finally have that. Which is an important thing. I want to show that. A lot of people are like, how do I get from here to there? And it's like you just do it. And eventually opportunity will come and you'll meet it. Or you won't, and the opportunity will fly by and you'll fucking lose your shit. I was there to meet the opportunity. I knew what I wanted to do, and I kept finding new ways to do it, and it finally clicked. I found my spot. I found my niche. Feels good, man. We fucking love you. No, I, I, yeah, it's, it's a great feeling I never forget. Yeah, it's yeah. Streaming, I, I never thought about it, but it perfectly uses everything I learned. I ran a broadcast for two years in high school. I did a year of graphic design in high school, which, by the way, is how I make all these scenes, because they never taught me Photoshop. Because it was a two-year program, but I started it my senior year. So I only ever learned Illustrator, and then in the second year they teach you Photoshop. All of these scenes are based on my one year in... This is... <laughs> Uh-oh. Are based on my one year in graphic design. But yeah, whenever I found streaming, I was like, shit, it uses every life skill that I've acquired. This is perfect. Perfect. It was a long time coming. It was like all the Infinity Stones came together. 
in a very cool and creative way. And a lot of new streamers have that problem where they give up because they don't know how to talk. All the time I go on r slash twitch, half the posts are like, I, I want people to watch me, but I'm not going to talk unless people, a bunch of people are in my chat because I would look weird. How many sources? Not that many. Not that many. Watch this. Watch this. One of the sources is half this. Watch this. See that, bro? See that? That immersion? This scene is only 10 sources. Yeah. Yeah. I got efficient at it. I got efficient at it. Pfft. Immersion broken. <laughs> Anyways, what was I talking about? Oh, about how people never know how to talk. You just gotta do it. Like, how do you think YouTubers do it? Just fucking talk. Talk, forehead. I just say my thoughts out loud. It's perfect because my brain never shuts up. It's why I can't sleep. But I turn my negatives into a pro. My brain never shuts up. So I just, if I think a thought, I tell you the thought. Luckily, I'm not a hateful person. I'd be banned by now. I remember that early on when I would do drunk, you laugh, you drinks. People would be like, be careful. Are you really going to get drunk on stream? Like, yeah. Like, what if you say something? Like, what? I'm not hiding anything. This is me, baby. <laughs> yeah, I came on and I immediately nonstop talked. I immediately had chatted. I see all these people that are like, I'm streaming for a year. I'm at zero viewers. Why does no one watch me? And you'll go to their VOD and it's silence for five hours. Occasionally they're like, huh. So, you know, the mic is on, but they refuse to talk. Just make some content. If you build it, they will come. It's Noah's Ark. They can't get on the Ark if the Ark isn't there. Make a fucking Ark. I know it takes a while. Maybe no one will like the Ark. Maybe people will die before they can get on your Ark. Maybe you'll die making the Ark. But motherfuckers can't get on an Ark unless there's an Ark. So you're already fucking not having it. They can't get, you lose immediately. You at least have a shot if you make the Ark. If you at least attempt to make the Ark, you got a shot. If you just say, I'm not making the arc until they show up, ah, uh, you're fucked. No one's going to show up for an arc that might happen. Idiot. Make an arc. I hope that speech meant something to somebody. Any arcs in chat? <laughs> All right. Next question. That's what it was like when I... <laughs> We're really elaborating on this. You want to know how I have all this energy, chat? Let's be honest. Exclamation point. Yerba. Uh-oh. Yerba. In the chat. Even Otto likes it. Oh my god, that's crazy. It's crazy. I feel like some some five-year-old in chat is now building an ark in their backyard. <laughs> that's always the crazy thing. It's almost annoying to me. I'll be building ceiling on stream and people go, How drunk are you right now? How high are you right now? And I'll be like, I'm not a liar. What? It hurts me that people can't be this fun without thinking you need to take something for it. It sounds preachy as fuck. Some people do need it. Just don't care, forehead. This would be such a lame stream if I cared. Too many people care. You need some of us motherfuckers that don't care. But then you judge them. You're like, oh, you care? Or you don't care? That's sad. Priorities? You're gonna sell your bed for content? Yeah. I'll be the martyr of content. If my dislocated knee makes 20 people laugh, it was worth it. And guess what? It made a lot more people than that laugh. It's sad. You got scared of a creeper in your car? You live a sad life. Man! I made millions laugh at that bitch. Worth. I I live, dude. I'm like I grew up watching Jackass. And that constant, almost unhealthy love for entertaining others. I, I have that I have that similar feeling. I like to entertain others. I enjoy it. It's something I like to do. But it's always ruined when someone's like, idiot. How high are you at? How drunk are you right now? I wouldn't talk about my penis if I wasn't drunk. Okay. Don't project. It's weird when people project. You just said your penis was tiny. No one would say that unless very drunk. Hmm. I say it because other people won't. Someone's got to be weird. Okay, I'm not high on life. I'm not going to say that. That is some cringe. Yeah. 
I always be talking about penis and coochie. Yo, what up, Spencer? How you doing today? How you doing, Spence? You starting your arc tonight? Let me know how it goes. Yo, can we get some arc art in the Discord? I have an art channel in Discord. If you make an arc, even an MS Paint, I want to see some arcs in my Discord tonight. It's in the art channel. I want to see <laughs> some arcs. That way we know who watched. All right. <laughs> Cars, son. How did you meet Teal? It's weird that people don't know how I met Teal. It's not interesting. We've only known each other. It seems like we've known each other for years. Because that's how some streamers are. Like, I've been talking nonstop for four years. You wouldn't know it, but I have severe social anxiety. Like, if I'm going down a Walmart aisle, and there's one person in the aisle between me and the bread that I want, rather than walking down the aisle and just walking around the person, and the slight chance I might have to say excuse me, I will go the next aisle over and walk around and enter from the other side. And then if there's someone in that aisle, I just keep going. But then I'll go all the way around, and by the time I get back to where I want to be, there's someone at the end cap, so then I awkwardly look at my phone like I'm waiting for someone to tell me what to buy over the phone. You wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it. I've gotten better thanks to streaming. I've learned how to how to talk and get out of situations and always make a conversation out of anything. You wouldn't know it, but streaming has kind of been a therapy for me. I used to never know how to start a conversation, carry a conversation. Now I don't shut the fuck up. Still anxious, but I know how to talk my way out of situations and interact with people. Which makes it easier now. Had I met Teal years ago, we probably wouldn't still be streaming together. But uh, here's how. Darklight, he's in my chat and in Teal's chat, longtime viewers of both of us, made a shrine to Teal in my Minecraft subscriber server that I was streaming. I walked up to it. I said, that's disgusting, not knowing who it was. Darklight clipped it, sent it to Teal. Teal laughed it off. Darklight sent the clip of Teal laughing it off to me. I felt bad seeing a streamer I just insulted react to me insulting them. He laughed it off, though. He then react to me almost being upset. Uh, and then I called him on that stream and was like, yo, my bad. And he was like, you're good. Then he gifted me a bunch of subs. And then a week later, a game called It Takes Two came out. And I went, hey, you're new. Our chats like each other. Let's do this. And he went, okay. And that's it. That's it. It's not that interesting. It's not that interesting. And then we kiss. Yeah, I'm the same our own weird with a vein of anonymity and having the berries nice. Yeah. Because people will say, they're like, ah, you don't get it. You're not actually anxious. You don't get it. You're fine. You're a Chad. Some people do say that. I'm not just overhyping myself. Um, Chad, I'm talking to a bunch of cameras and words on a screen. I'm in an empty room. You want to know what this looks like? Like, there's an FBI agent, like, spying on me. Expectation versus reality. You know? I imagine if I was in front of a classroom of people, 20 people, like, all of you were, like, actually in front of me, I'd probably not say some of the things I'm saying. I'd probably be better than I used to be at public speaking, thanks to streaming. Uh, still... Wouldn't be saying half the things I'm saying. All right, next one. That's how I met Teal. Yo, welcome, Jelastic, to the Discord. Chat, odds or evens. Odds or evens. The answer is three. That's my favorite number. Did you know that? This is a very quick and simple question. Anonymous wants to know what companies have you been sponsored by? Uh, just a few. Just a few. Only this year have I recently really tried to like reach out. I should have probably done that years ago. 
um, now that I see the opportunities that are actually presented that I never actually like sought out. Um, but my first year on Twitch, I got sponsored by Tiny Build. I'm still partnered with them. It's simple. They just give me all their games for free, and I get into the betas. But I didn't even reach out to them. That was an accident. I was streaming Speedrunners a lot, my favorite game. One of my favorite games, not the favorite. And one of the community managers at Tiny Build happened to be a viewer of mine. DM'd me and was like, hey, do you want a bunch of game codes to give away to your chat? And I went, yeah. And then he went, do you want to be a Tiny Build affiliate? At the time, I was averaging eight viewers. Didn't know what I was doing. The stream did not look like this. And I was like, yeah. And so ever since then, yeah, I'm still good to go with them. Um, and then there was a dry spell. I mean, I've gotten some free, like a single free game, you know, where I email the company. I'm like, hey, you're releasing a game on this day. Can I just have a free copy, like a review copy, please? Maybe a bonus giveaway copy. And I've had a few, some luck here and there. But this year, your boy kicked up the gears. Fucking the company that makes Raid Shadow Legends had a new game. They went, here's a fuck ton of money. Stream it for three hours. And I went, Shant, we've been trying to sell out for a while. Can we do this together? It was the number one stream that month. I averaged 35 viewers playing a game I've never played before and selling out. The game was Vikings War of Clans. Chat blew me away. It was kind of insane. It was kind of insane. See, Jolly, some people are like, yeah, don't like, yeah, yeah, they're like there for the content. But I knew my chat could turn it into a joke. Like, it was the most fun me and chat have had because it's like we sold out. Because I immediately used that money to like invest into stream in a way that I wouldn't have been able to. Like, it was a community event. So it was good shit. And then, I've recently been reaching out to more. Um, it, so there's certain companies I'll never work with, you know? I think selling out is doing something that I've been preaching against for years. Like, um, if Red Bull or Game Fuel was like, yo, we want to sponsor you, I'd be like, no. Because I've been addicted to that kind of shit for years. And I've tried and failed numerous times to, 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 to quit these sugary, acidic, heart-stopping drinks. And it'd be very shitty of me to be like, hey, uh, chat, you should get addicted to these, even though I've been saying for years that you shouldn't. I reached out to Yerba Mate, um, because it's an entirely plant-based beverage, and similar to black coffee, which I've been drinking recently for my boost without long-term hurting myself. So it makes sense. It didn't feel like I was selling out. So that's it. Those are th those are my three. We went from one in 2017, and then this year we got two. So we're really stepping up the sponsorship game. And also, you're been really cool to me. Um, I messaged them and was like, hey, um, how do you track this? You want me to, to, to tweet about it, post on Instagram, yada, yada, yada. The guy went, oh, no, no, don't take it too seriously. We just want you to talk about the product in your own time whenever you want, as much as you want. When you feel the need or the right opportunity to bring up the product you're following, do it in whatever way feels fit. The only thing we're tracking is clicks on the site. You don't actually have to do these deliverables. And I was like, fuck yeah! They've been great to me. So, shout out Yerba Mate. My, one of my favorite sponsors I've done so far. They've been very nice. Exclamation point Yerba in the chat. Oh, yeah, it's easy to to, to, to build that up, too. Because once you have a relationship with some sponsors, you can use those to get other sponsors. Because you guys are insane. We, we, we average 20 or less viewers any given day. But I have 150 subscribers every month, and it never drops. Our engagement is amazing for even a partnered streamer. I don't think you understand how engaged you are. That stream for Vikings War of Clans, I think it was called. I got 30 plus people to try it for more than an hour on a day's notice. Again, my viewer average at that time was 15. My viewer engagement is so good and it means so much. And that's what really gets us. Yeah. 
it just depends. Like, if you're a streamer that's always said, I'll never sell out, and then you sell out, yeah, that's bad. But I, since day one, have been like, man, I would love to be able to buy more stuff for stream by selling out. And chat knew that. Like, I went, yo, chat, it's time to secure the bag. And I still had doubts. I was like, chat's going to hate me, chat's going to hate me. And chat went, oh, do we love this game today? Yeah, we love this game. I'm not, everyone got on board. Everyone was like, we fucking love this game today. Because people are always like, what's a free way I can support you? And I finally had an option. Because usually it's like, just sub or watch the channel. But I was like, yo, if you want to support me, here you go. Here's your free option. I have not. I'll probably do that on stream. I think next week we'll try the loose leaf in the teabag version. All right, next question. We've been doing this for two hours now. I was only going to do it for an hour. Wow, I'm getting caught in the sauce. I'm a ball of sweat. We're really, like, elaborating a lot more on these. All right, odds or evens. It is question number... 30. Lost in the sauce. All right, so this question is going to be jarring to new viewers. Old viewers will be like, really, this story again? But I think it's 50-50. Like, I think half of you know this story and half of you don't. One's in chat if you've heard the story. Two's in chat if you haven't. There's always a time to retell this story. I haven't told it, I think, once this year. It's been a while because it got old. Noah's obviously heard it. Peppermint's obviously heard it. But it must be told. It must be told. A lot of the new Seal viewers have probably never heard it. This story is a roller coaster of emotions. Fire Ice, you've never heard this story? Oh boy. Oh boy. I knew there'd be a few. Okay, so let's start off with some preface. My name is Trey. <laughs> Hello. My real name isn't Sun or Suncracker or Suncracker Zero. I know. Your immersion is fucking ruined. My name is Trey. Hello. Um, my father uh, grew up mostly in the 90s, had me at a young age, and he was very into hip hop and gangster rap, as many people in the 90s were. And there was this famous film in the 90s titled Boys in, letter in, The Hood. And the main character right here, played by Cuba Gooding Jr., shockingly, looks a little different from me, is named Trey. My father, who looks just like me, went, I want that to be my son's first name. Named after the main character from Boys in the Hood. So already life is a joke. Already life is a joke right as I go from a spermy. Okay? Now I live in bumfuck nowhere. You know this Missouri. Where none of this culture exists really at all. And so I usually try and dodge the question. A lot of people are like, they'll see my name tag when I worked at Dairy Queen and be like, Oh, Trey! Is that short for something? I'd be like, no. And they'd be like, oh, why is it named that? And I'm, I don't want to explain to a 90-year-old man who just got back from Sunday church what boys in the hood is. Some people go, oh, are you a triplet? Are you the first of three something? No. Nope. Oh, are you a third? Are you like the third something? No. Nope. My dad just liked the name. That's what I always tell people. I refuse to share this story to strangers. So chat, you get to really know. Anyways... So fast forward, I'm working at Dairy Queen, and every Sunday, the Chiefs have a football game. They're up in Kansas City, but being in Missouri, I'm relatively close on on the way. So if there's home games, we get ass-blastedly busy, and rather than managing, I have to help take some orders uh, and, and, and take food out. This family comes in, white, they look like me, Okay, this family, this husband, this wife, and their three kids, young kids. They come up, the wife is ordering the food, and she sees my name tag. 
And she goes, is that Trey? Is that how you pronounce it? Trey? I go, yeah. Yeah, it's Trey. And she looks both ways. Now, chat, if you're ever talking to someone and they look both ways, like they're about to cross the road before they cross you, you should leave that conversation. But I can't. I'm at work. I have to interact with this person. She looks both ways. It is packed. It's Sunday church day and it's Sunday chiefs game day. But anyways, she looks both ways. That's a black boy's name. Total fucking stranger. Verbatim said that to me. Like it was acceptable and anyway, like I did something wrong. Like I didn't know that. I don't know why she told me that. She knew she shouldn't because she looked both ways. The, the, the other people heard this because we're in a crowded area even though she tried to like loudly whisper. And uh, she sees I'm flabbergasted and she goes, oh. Me and my husband, we're from Kansas City, so there's a lot. And I go, a lot of what? A lot of what? And she goes, people named Trey. I am losing it, but it doesn't end here. And the husband hears this conversation. And he goes, do you play basketball? He gets excited. Like, I am their first black friend just because I have a, a, a culturally a name. And he goes, do you play basketball? Grown-ass adult man. Ask me because my name is Trey. Like, that's enough for him to ask if I play. I go, I go, no. He goes, you never ball him with your homies? I go, no. He goes, you never ball him with your boys? And they're like, yo, yo, T-Dog, pass me the ball. Total fucking stranger. He has now given me a nickname. I don't know how I've been culturally appropriated as a white dude. I don't know how this happens. And I'm like, no, no. And they're like, so, so, so what are you named after? The first, I was like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to tell these people how I got my name at this point. I refuse to. I refuse to. Yeah, they've been trolling. No, they were excited. I'm not joking. At the prospect of knowing someone with even remotely any connection. No, I've worked, I've worked in public service too long. Jolly Crab, these people very much exist. It's spelled T-R and then there's a Q-E. It's the most common way to spell it, yeah. And it is culturally, usually, that's how... Jolly, you saw the Boys in the Hood character, right? That's how he spells it. That's how the drummer of Green Day spells it. He's Trey Cool. Way cooler name than mine. Yeah, just how Peppermint put it. Yeah. Anyways. Because otherwise it'd be Trey. That accent makes it A. Like Beyonce. Alright. Anyways. And I'm like refusing. They're like, come on, tell us how you got your name. And I'm like, fucking works. And they, they keep like, appropriate. they're like, you never play basketball? Do you play football? Are you fast? I'm like, no. And other employees are hearing this and they're kind of laughing. And then I finish taking their order and the husband goes, all right, kids, say goodbye to T-Dog. There are now three tiny blonde haired, blue eyed children going, bye T-Dog. Waving. Walking through the store, the whole store is now paying attention my direction, and and my coworkers like, D do they know you? It's like no, no, they don't know me. I don't know them, but they now have a nickname for me. And so, and so, time passes. Twenty minutes goes by, and this is a fancier Dairy Queen. We actually take the food to your table on like a nice little dish. And so I'm also helping with that. I'm everywhere on Sundays because we're really busy. And I take it. I'm calling them. I'm like 47, 47. And sure as you fucking guess, this family. Oh? Uh, we're 37. And the kids immediately. T-Dog, T-Dog, people clap. T-Dog, like Fortnite dancing. And I'm like, all right, there you go. I put the food down. And I'm trying to get out of there. And the dad goes, kids, fist bump T-Dog. They are now fist bumping me. They assume I play basketball. They assume my friends call me T-Dog. They assume I be balling with my homies. They now request that I fist bump their children. I, a total stranger, who they're now best friends with because of my name. I fist bump these three tiny children as they go, thanks, T-Dog. I have never wanted to die more than in that moment so that is the story of the lady the total stranger that looked both ways and said that's a black boy's name and her absolutely horrible family 
I still wonder how they're doing. Probably still committing <laughs> various crimes. I hope you enjoyed that story. It is a classic. I don't get to tell it too often. So there you go. You forgot to hear the classic Zune story. Uh, the train name story, just like it's spelt right up there. There you go. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. <sighs> Alright. Next question. Odds or evens, chat. Odds or evens. We have eight questions left. I think some of these will go kind of quick. It will do some gaming. We all know it's spelled tra- <laughs> Leap more. It's like Elon Musk's kid. Xenon more five. They were- Yeah, yeah. I was somehow being racially profiled while being white jolly crap. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's it's funny to me. Like, I, I'm not a, a, upset about it. I, like, I, I'm fine. But, like, to see someone be that comfortably ignorant in public to a stranger... Well, we live in Kansas City, so there's a lot of... Like, they were trying to be woke, too. But they were just so horribly out of touch. Alright, question six. Question six. Ooh, another Coster question. Coster wants to know... Do you even lift, bro? Um, so I did a lot, like I said, whenever I was about to enlist in the Air Force. Um, yeah, I did a lot. I was shredded. Uh, I used to be a twink growing up. You wouldn't believe it, but I was actually, like, underweight a lot growing up. Um, and I got really fit in high school, and then I got really fit before trying to join the Air Force. But then I found out about streaming, and I became a disgusting slob of a human being. Put on, like, 50 pounds. Lost all my muscle. Um, but about a year ago, I started getting healthier. I've lost like 30 pounds now. I diet great. I do intermittent fasting. I'm trying to get back to a healthy weight, working out a bit more. I'm still dieting wonderfully. I'm doing fantastic at it. There's a room in Discord called Food Picks, where we discuss food and dieting if you ever have any questions. Um, I've learned some shit. But anyways, uh, I stopped working out entirely last November. Because, um, I dislocated my knee. And now I'm horrified to do it again. Because, fun fact, once you dislocate your knee, horrifying in an accident, there's a 25% chance you do it again. And then if you dislocate it a second time, it's a 50% chance after that. And I don't know if you know it, chat, but it was horrifying. I'll type it real quick. If you don't know the story, I haven't, dude, I haven't jumped off a swing. I mean, I'm not a child, so I wouldn't be doing these things, but like a trampoline, a swing. Like, I very carefully, like I'm 90 years old, step out of the shower because I'm terrified of slipping and dislocating it again. Trigger warning for that image. My knee is on the side of my leg. Yes, it was painful. Um, so I haven't worked out since, and I'm trying to convince myself that my muscles in the knee have regrown. So I should be able to work out again. Um, I mean, I can show you a picture. Let me let me see if I can find one for you, Peppermint. Hold on. Oh, I can prove it. I, I have an old picture of me and Bryant from when we were in high school. Give me a second. I'm, I'm on my old Facebook where I have all my old photos. Also, that leg hair. Yeah, I'm a hairy dude. Outside of the face, I'm very hairy. I dislocated my knee. Yeah, I had the washer and everything. So no, I do not lift. I don't do any exercising right now. I'm incredibly nervous about my leg. All right, I'm going through the pictures. I'm going through the pictures. You won't believe it, chat. It's gonna shock you. It's gonna shock you. All right, I'm now 18. All right, I gotta find it. They're less hairy than me. I mean, you have it. Yeah. Maybe. Fuck. I'm looking. I'm looking. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, there's a lot of pictures of me. I'm very popular, you know? Kind of a big deal. 
Am I almost? I gotta almost be there. Yeah, this is March. Actually, Bigfoot. Almost there. It has me and Bryant holding hands, so you're just gonna love it. Uh oh, it's not loading anymore? Oh, shit. Come on. Come on. I'm trying to show old son, Facebook. Facebook. Come on. Which time? Which time would you possibly remember? Also, we didn't kiss. Bryant kissed me. You could tell. All right, relax. There's a difference, a massive difference. I cannot find this picture suddenly. This picture doesn't exist. I know I can find it. I know I can find it. That's too old. Where is this picture? <gasps> I found it. I found it. Oh my god, this is going to blow your mind, chat. This is going to blow your mind. Oh, the v-neck is going to hurt you. Oh, I have the Aztec shoes too. Hold on. There we go. Can I show this? Yep. Look at me. Look at me. Look at Twink Sun, dude. Look at me. Sporting the V-neck. You can see everything. Look at these razor sharp. Look at lanky Bryant. Look at lanky me. Same. Look at the exact same haircut. Exact same haircut. Look at what stream became of me. Look, same dude, chat. That was like six years ago. Six years ago. Full screen it? <laughs> I tried. Can I zoom on this? I can't. Oh, I have an idea. I know what I can do. Hold on. I'll make it a Discord link. And then I can. Same hair. Yeah. That's the haircut everyone in my town gets. Brian still gets it, though. You look the same. I disagree. That was... I weighed, like, 160. Now I weigh 195. I was up to 220. My, like, second year streaming. Look at these dudes. Brian used to be so much taller. Look at the Aztec Vans. Purple V-neck. Ballsy move. What? Mad lads, dude. We were at the fair. It's the town fair. Fat stream. I'm overweight right now. I was obese, which is why I stopped. My goal was to get fat, though. Because I was leaning to streaming. I don't know if you guys know who Fat Mac is from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I told my family I was going to get fat until it was no longer funny. And it was like I was grunting. And I got to like 225, 230. And my family was like, how are you getting so big so fast? But I was just like, I wanted to be funny fat. So I could prove that I could lose it. And I have. I've went right back to 195. Just like my inspiration Mac from Always Sunny. You guys know who Fat Mac is? I thought it'd be funny to get fat real quick. And I did. And people were like, dude, why would you do that? You're not just going to suddenly lose it. But I did. I lost 20 pounds in two months. And I've lost the other 10 the rest of this year. What was wrong with me? It was funny. It was worth it. I got to eat whatever I wanted. And I was funny fat. And I was funny fat. I don't know. I'm here to be the uh, the clown, dude. I'm the class clown. All right, one sec. Let me get the questions queued back up. Yeah, I saw in general. All right. Uh, there we go. All right. Next question. But it was funny that I could prove it. I was like, I will lose the weight. I'm going to get... As fat as funnily possible, and then I'll lose it. People are like, you're not just going to lose it. But I did. <laughs> and now I'm much healthier. Like, I think my biggest is in that Creeper Scare clip. So if you've never seen it, you know what I'm talking about. But that was probably, like, the biggest I was. And I look gross. And it's not my most viewed clip. I look like a different person. All right. Eight questions remaining, chat. And then we're just going to probably chill out with some balloons or some split second. Don't forget, it's the last stream of the week. If you want updates when I post my schedule for next week, make sure to join the Discord, exclamation point Discord, and follow me on Twitter. 
exclamation point Twitter to get the most updates. We have another question from Peppermint. They got a lot of questions on here. They asked some good questions. You fame. It's weird. Some people do consider me famous already, and that is weird because I do not. All right. Peppermint would like to know what's the worst injury you got as a child? I never got injured as a child. I've only fucked things up as an adult. As a child, the only injury you could say I had was my heart disease, where I had heart attacks. And my heart got up to 300 plus. Well, I consider myself famous at partner. I don't think so. I think it's a big achievement that I'd like to achieve. I, I still don't think so. Because, like, when I hit a million views on YouTube, my family said, wow, you're famous. When I got sent 80 cans of free yerba mate, a couple friends went, wow, you're famous now. My friends, when I got noticed at a Walmart by a total stranger... As the creeper guy, he said, wow, you're famous now. I still haven't had that moment. I still don't. I guess this is a blur. It's like a slow steady. But these people see this content. They're like, oh, it's Trace streaming. Oh, he has a million views? Like, it's at sudden peak. But, like, I don't know. I don't think about it like that. Like, that's not the goal, I guess? I don't know. I don't know when I would be like, I'm famous. Like, I have a big ego. But I still don't think I'm famous. And that's not really the goal. I, I don't know. I'm definitely underrated as fuck, though. I'm definitely underrated as fuck, though. Yeah, I don't know. Chat, when would you consider me famous? Some of you already do. Some of you are like, partner. I don't think partner. I don't know. Like, I know some partnered streamers that I've even hung out in chat, but I'm not like, you're famous. Because it's changed. There's a lot more famous people now, so the definition's changed. It used to be like, oh, you're in Hollywood? Famous. Now it's like, what? What's, what, what is famous? I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. I don't think about it. I consider you famous if you got 50 consecutive viewer, concurrent viewers. Huh. I, yeah, I don't know. I just have to be in that moment, I guess. I'll be like, chat, I'm famous. Oh, yeah, I'm just trying to think of that, that spot, though, Fire Ice. Like, yeah, if I, yeah, if I average 20k viewers, I, yes, I would be famous. I would agree with you. But I'm trying to think of that point. That tipping point. You know what I mean? And it's hard for me to think about that. Like, it's like when you ask someone, like, how much money for you to suck a dick? They're like, obviously, I'd do it for a billion dollars. But it's hard to find, like, the true, like, lowest amount. I don't know. I don't know. It's an interesting question. But, yeah, worst, worst injury I got as a child was my heart disease. You guys have already heard me talk about it a million times. I used to have basically heart attacks as a kid my heart rate would get up to 300 plus which yes should kill you um <laughs> but then i had surgery to fix it so poggers but no i've never broken a bone um i never dislocated anything until last halloween when i fucked my knee yeah it's tough jolly crab it's tough because i'm also on a bunch of platforms i don't consider fame one platform like i think if I go out in public and I get noticed for something on my TikTok and I go out in public on another day and there's someone that recognizes me from Twitch. I think then I'm like, wow. Because it's, I think it's kind of easy to be noted for something on one specific main platform, but to like have your reach be like in multiple facets. Like some people go like, oh, dude, I saw you on that clip from YouTube. And then someone's like, dude, you're on my TikTok. And then someone's like, dude, I love the Twitch streams. I think that. Like, I could have someone recognize me in public once a month for my Twitch stream, and I still wouldn't think I'm famous. I don't know. I don't know. You'd have to leave Missouri. Yeah, that's why I've only been recognized once. And it was weird. Because it was for a platform I'm not even on. Well, now I am. I wasn't at the time. You're famous when you get noticed by huge streamers? I have, though. I have, though. Hassan has watched my stream. I've e-dated with Celestia Vega. I've I've been on the runner-up for like the, the the Austin show. I've I've done lots of cool shit in my three and a half years on this platform. I've I've I you know I've had some cool partners watch me in chat. I've uh, I, I I I've you know Hassan watched me. Yeah, he called me an incel. 
I've been the number one uh, clip on the Twitch subreddit multiple times. Oh god, you guys are kind of new viewers. You really don't know this? You really don't know? Okay. Let's go down memory lane real quick. Yeah, this was years ago. I'm an old fan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Jolly Crab, there are three producers for the Austin show that run live interviews. I went, I got the chance to be on one of them. I did really well. Um, unfortunately, that producer got fired the next day for leaking a bunch of stuff, so it never went anywhere. But I got the attention of him. I got to go on his show. And he made me e-date uh, Celestia Vega, and it was very cringe. But yeah, let me let me pull up a couple clips real quick. Scuffed pay money wubby. Hassan called me scuffed pay money wubby, and it's still chat's favorite insult. All right, clips I've created. Uh, let me maybe sort by views. Yep, yep. Look, that's me. That's me, chat. That's that's fucking me calling woman bitch in front of Yeah, he said he was still big. He was still averaging 10k viewers. He was still big at this time. And at the time, this is when I watched Hassan most, and I was in chat when he when he found my clip. At the time, this was the number one post on Reddit. There are three articles about this clip. There are three articles about that clip. So some people would say that makes me famous. I have like five articles written about me. He did call me an incel. And he did call me scuff pay money wubby. It's one of my proudest moments. I'm okay with it. It's a clip I kind of regret. Because I got clip champs. Clip champs. Immediately after this clip, I actually give a well thought provoking take. But... This was all that got clipped, was me just calling girl bitch. It wasn't a good look. I had to explain it, though. He let me explain myself after the fact. Maybe, just maybe, they see you as high, see. And that is, I'm going to say, uh, probably an ungrateful bitch. Um, could you chill out? Look at his face. Look at his face. Look at the chat. Chat. Thousands. Look at me. Look at me. Right there. That's me. Stop. Now clip this. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's weird champing. Really? 128 upvotes on that? Good one, LSF. What is this, like... Scuffed pay money wubby? We already... we <laughs> Pay money wubby is scuffed in us. Uh, for himself, okay? Suncracker, I can explain. No, stop. This hurts. Chat turns into Keck W's when they realize I'm in the chat. Is that you? He's in my chat. This hurts. What is this? What is this? Explain yourself. Three months subscriber to me. Am I really this squad W? Huh? Oh my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's a, there's a part two where he runs away because he finds out I'm a three-month sub. And he's like, are my followers really incels? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder if I can find the e-dating clip. That one is also very unbelievably cringe. Nah, I don't think it'll pop up. But yeah, that, if we go to clips of my channel. You famous than a lot of streamers I watch? Yeah, I'd say I'll make more famous than some things. That makes sense. But I don't think I'm famous. Yeah. My number one clip, this one has millions on TikTok, millions on YouTube. It's just me getting scared. This was the original Creeper Scare. It has less views here. Um, but a reporter wrote an article about it, and it was also the number one post on Reddit. Same for this one. This one also got posted. 
got three articles. One of them, I am mentioned one sentence away from Dr. Disrespect, which is a cool moment. I've had famous moments, but I am not famous. I disagree. I have been in articles where they're like, Dr. Disrespect, Suncracker, and others had this to say, which was very cool. Which was very cool. To be in the same paragraph as Dr. Disrespect, very cool. Uh, but yeah. We're going on a lot of tangents tonight. It's crazy. All right. <laughs> we're slowing down the rate we're getting through questions. We're almost done. This is going way longer than I thought. This will have to be edited. I was hoping to just throw the VOD on YouTube. Did it sound like... Yep. Yep. He came back. Uh, I explained in chat for like 15 minutes. He's like, okay, okay, okay. You got clip chip. Yeah. Yep. I've had a lot of interesting moments. Listen, it's been four years. I'm a clout chaser. We've had some funny shit happen. I had to go, but I guess we'll be back in like 20 minutes. All right, I'll still be here. We're gonna do uh, some gaming for like an hour, maybe? I don't wanna go too late tonight, but I would like to get some more split second PBs and it'll be top 10. Because right now I'm 13th on the speedrun.com leaderboards overall for split second. I wanna get top 10. I think I only need two more maps to do it. All right, all right, seven questions left. Come on, chat. All right, no more tangents. We have to speed round this. Can you see the has, 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 has. Yeah, one second. I've got a few others, yeah. I should really make a compilation on YouTube called like Sun's Biggest Clout Moments feature like the top clips. The top streamers like Destiny's watch my clips, Pokelaws watch my clips, Mizkif's seen my clips. Um I guess I should have like a a, a clout compilation. Uh the e-dating clip. I think that'd be good for the YouTube channel. Be easy to make. There's like 10 to 15 moments. All right, question seven. Oh my God, I'm sweating down my stomach right now. Sports balls would like to know. Oh no, it wasn't a lover host. Like I said, I didn't get to the actual show. It was one of the interview shows. Do you guys know the show Shameless? The episode. So, so like I said, I was I was on the producers' interview show with Celestia Vega, and I don't know if you know. There's a character in Shameless. I've never watched it, but there's a character in it who is crazy. The actress' name is Sammy Hanratty. I don't know if you know who that is, but she dates like the young boy character. She was on there too. I didn't realize she was actually famous until afterwards. I felt bad. And I had to leave the show because Tornado Sirens started playing. I'm not joking. And the next day, that producer got fired. I'm not joking. Uh, let me show you. Sammy Henratty. There we go. Uh, there we go. Maybe you'll recognize? Oh my god, that's a lot of bikinis. There we go. This person. Yeah, I was on the stream with her. I don't, I don't know if you recognize. So that was kind of neat. So that was kind of neat. Whoever this kid is, she dated him on the show. I've only seen like the first season. I really don't know much about it. You don't? Okay. Whatever. All right. Uh, yeah. I'll share. I'll, I'll find the Celestia Vega clip. It's like one minute. It's very cringe. I'm telling you. But it's cringe for both of us. Because, like, I suck at, like, uh, uh, like, the pickup lines. But then I'm like, okay, well, what do you like to do? And she goes, I watch Jeopardy. And that's it. Because, like, I'm talking about pop culture. Because we're streamers. We talk about pop culture. And she's not having it. And all the other dudes turned their cams off to make it more awkward. The streamer was playing music. It was Claw. I don't know if you know who Claw is. He's one of the old producers of the show. Um, But yeah, I ended up having to leave early because Tornado Sirens started going off. All right. This question. All right. Sports Balls wants to know, do you think we'll do more large collabs like SSSS? For those of you who don't know what SSSS is, I made 
a streamer, Minecraft, SMP server uh, last March. It was very successful. It's one of my favorite projects I've done to run my own little streamer group. It was me and nine other streamers that have never met before. We met live. We meshed great. It ran for about three months. All of us doubled viewership, doubled donations during it. We have one video on the YouTube channel, Peppermint. It's called We Fought the Inner or How We Scammed the Ender Dragon. It's from uh, one of our biggest moments where we tried to find the funniest way. You'll see all the streamers in that. Um, it was a lot of fun. That Don't Stab the Bees clip you've all seen is also from that. Um, there's some highlights out there. I don't think there's too many VODs because VODs for affiliates get deleted after 60 days. So, um, but Sports Balls was one of the members. He's also a moderator for the split second speedrun community. Uh, so that's probably why he's asking. I would love to. I would love to. The reason I, I have ideas for a new one, maybe not to do with Minecraft, with more streamers. I like taking on these projects. They're very creatively fulfilling. They're great for my channel. Uh, but intense anxiety. It takes a lot for me to talk to someone. Like before I get in a call with any streamer, even if I'll be talking shit like this, I have to really hype myself up, let alone reaching out to 10 to 20 streamers. Also getting streamers all organized, let alone one, but 20 to do anything at the same time is so AIDS. Streamers are so bad about communication, answering DMs. We're awful people at planning. So I want to, I have the drive, I have the ideas. I just have to find the right month where my anxiety isn't ass and I find the right group of streamers that I want to work with. But yes, I would absolutely love to do more group projects and more collabs this year. We'll just have to see how it goes. Next question. All right, six left. It is so hot in here. Question number 25. All right. We have an easy, quick question. We're just going to speed through. Nope, we can't do a tangent on this one. It doesn't make sense. There's no way. Owen would like to know, what's your favorite smoothie? I fucking discovered boba last year. I don't know if it's true boba, but I discovered a place that sells boba smoothies and boba drank. I, I want boba in everything. Chewing on drank is amazing to me. I love me some boba, but they sell this watermelon boba smoothie that is amazing. I love watermelon in anything. I love watermelon juice, but this watermelon smoothie is so refreshing, so good. The boba is so good. It's like watermelon seeds, but in fun form. So you can actually eat them and not have to spit out the seeds. Watermelon boba smoothie. By far my favorite. Next question. Next question. Absolutely. All right. Question number one. The first one I added to the list. Woo, is he even here? Are there any weebs in chat that actually want this question right now? Are there any weebs in chat that want this question? I've answered it a lot lately because I've been talking about it so much. Steven, the classic one, said, what are your favorite anime and why? Angel Beats. Angel Beats. One Punch Man season one. Season two sucks absolute donkey dick. And uh, Death Note, obviously. Death Note only up to like the first mega climax. The last like eight episodes of Death Note are ass. Brotherhood's pretty good for a while. I'm watching Mob Psycho after I watch. Right now I'm watching No Game No Life because I really like shorter anime. I hate having to watch a thousand episodes or a hundred episodes even. I love these quick 13 episode anime. I'm watching this one that's called like No Game No Life. It's very meh, but I have to finish it. I, I have like three episodes left. Uh... I've heard Mob Psycho is recommended a lot for people that like One Punch Man Season 1. That's what I've been told, so I'm definitely going to... I'm going to watch Mob Psycho after the uh, No Game No Life. And I think after that, I'm going to watch Tokyo Ghoul, which I've also heard is very good. All right. Next question. 
there are sweat beads forming on my eyeballs. But we're almost through. There's only four questions left and I can ditch the suit. Like anime tatas. That's fan service. All right, question 18. All right, we have a question from Luminescent Luna. When you were a kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? It depends which stage of kid. There were lots of different stages of kids that I like, like, like changed. When I was in like kindergarten to like second grade, firefighter. Hell yeah, wanted to be a firefighter. That shit looked awesome. That shit was dope. Then I grew up and I was like, man, I don't know. Uh, then I got into late middle school, early high school, and I found a production company called Rooster Teeth slash Achievement Hunter slash whatever you want to call it now. Fell in love with it. Even in the eighth grade, I was like, I want to work with these guys. I can make content. And so I went to their hiring page, and they had one position available. And I was like, I'm going to do that. Even though it won't be there in five years when I graduate. And it was... It was to be uh, a cinematographer. They wanted a camera person. And it said it required a four-year art degree. And so I went, okay. So that's what I'm going to work towards. I'm going to get a four-year art degree. And then I'm going to go work at Rooster Teeth in Austin, Texas. And that's literally what I worked towards all the way through high school. All the way through high school. That was my goal. I was like, I want to do that. I want to work for them. I want to work for them. I don't want that job. I want to work for them. I don't care what the job is. I want to work there. I love the content they were pushing so much. But then junior, senior year, I put myself into media tech so much, editing so much. I learned I hated filming and I hated editing. I didn't have a passion for it for shit. I did it all through high school for media tech. I did it for that state competition I mentioned. I did it for numerous reasons, including my YouTube channel. Boy, oh boy, do I prefer live content. Pre-recorded content is so booty hole to me. I have no passion for it. And I fell off hard, especially once I started doing the stuff with broadcasts with the radio station uh, and then finding Twitch. Yeah, so that was pretty much it. I, I went from firefighter to I wanted to, to help produce content for the company Rooster Teeth. But, but that want to produce company content for the company Rooster Teeth is what made me do media tech, made me do graphic design, all these skills that I now use for streaming. So I may have divulged from my path, but I still use all these skills to this very day that I acquired initially just for that. So that's really good. The skills didn't go to waste that I learned. They just got reacquired by different goals. Now I know what I want to do. I just want to entertain people. I want to do stand-up comedy one day. I want to do voice acting some more. Um, I want to do broadcasts. I would love to be the voice of like a football team. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the final line. That's just, that's just, that's just uh, old-timey prospect specter horse races. All right. Interesting question. Good question coming in from Anonymous. Anonymous wants to know, what was your first funny joke if you have done any funny ones at all? The implication is that I have done one if you've asked that. I don't know. I think this is interesting because people who who don't think they're funny or lack the confidence assume that there's that like first big break or that anything is planned and I'm not just spouting nonsense until you laugh. Um, my first original joke goes something like this. When I moved to Kansas, it was I was I was working on some stand-up comedy bits. I have like four. I don't have a lot. I have like five minutes of material. But there was this bit where I was like, man, I took a year of Spanish class at a Missouri high school. I don't know shit. You could put a gun to my head. I won't learn anything. Okay. Hold on. I'm trying to remember how it goes. I haven't told it in years. But it used to make my friends laugh. And I knew it was good because they'd go. I had that cool question where they'd go, what's that from? Anytime you say something funny and someone goes, what's that from? Such a cool feeling. But then they don't believe you, and they just think you're lying. But anyways, 
I, I try to be like a Heisenberg type, you know? I I, I joined like the, the, the Mexican Cholos. The drug trade, baby. That's what I do with my one year of Spanish class. I can make a lot of money doing that. But I'd make it so far. I can only do so much. Even though I made it to the top of the top and I become the top of El Chapo, I go, <clears throat> I think I'm hot shit because I don't know what any of these words I'm saying mean, but I know the words. They call me El Pollo. But then from the background, they call you chicken. And that's that's the whole joke. <laughs> They call me El Pollo. They call you chicken. That's the whole joke. And it kills. I don't know where, I don't know why, but I just, I think it's really funny. You may never find it's funny. My friends love that joke and I love that joke. It used to be reworded. I used to have like a better version of it down, but essentially that, that, that's it. That's my first joke that I like came up with and I was like, that's funny. That was my first where I was like, this is a joke that I will tell. I, I would go to my friends, but I, they'd be like, dude, it, what crime would you commit? I'd be like, dude, I I would love to be like a drug leader, but my one year Spanish won't get me that far. I'd walk in and be like, they call me El Pollo. And I'd, they call you chicken. And then I'd be dead. <laughs> so there you go. That was, that was my first funny joke. There you go. Funny joke. I've written a few cents. Well, that is, that is the OG. The first one where my friend Kyle went, what is that from? All right. Another anonymous question. That makes this easy. A lot of people wanted to be anonymous for some of these. I don't know why. But I gave them the option. Fuck it. Will you take a break if and when you move? So this is referencing in May when I'll be moving. Um, no. God, no. I will be streaming every day. You will get desk building streams. You will get packing boxes streams. There will be no drop in content. You'll see streams where my computer's on the floor because we've already moved the desk. No, because we're moving to get some fresh content, baby. We're getting fresh content out the ass. Content is not dropping, even with moving. You are still getting your five streams a week. 100%. They will be scuffed. They will be broken. But, but, the content will not drop. So there you go. So no. Absolutely not. We gotta come out swinging. I can't take a break before a move. Because now I got bills to pay, baby. I'm gonna have to be selling out like crazy. It actually won't be that much more expensive than, than now. I think all my monthly expenses combined will be $5.50 a month. Everything. So long as I make five fifty a month from streaming, I live, I survive, we're good to go. Alright. Last question. I don't even need to spin the wheel. It's question eleven. Mm, could not be a better question. Once again from Anonymous. Could not be a better final question. Why do you say the weirdest shit sometimes? I've answered it earlier, I'll answer it again. Cause some people won't. It's fun. There's everyone expects everyone to be serious. The only thing interesting is that some people don't. Life would be boring if you didn't have me or people like me around. You didn't have the the, 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 the crazy homeless people on the street corner saying weird things. Uh, the streamers, the narcissists on YouTube. I don't know because it's easy to say and it doesn't hurt me. Oh my god, dude. I once stomped on my penis. Oh my god, that's my fetish. People go, why would you say that? I don't know. Because it's silly that you think it matters that I said that. That's why I say it. It's silly that you care. That's funny to me. You get a split. Somebody set the pins up and the whole bowling alley catches fire. That's a good quote. I didn't remember saying that. That's from ages ago. But yeah, it's... I don't lose anything. The people that lose when I say weird shit are the people that care. Nothing brings me down. I have more fun. I've got one existence. I might as well get silly with it. Why would I take it too seriously? That'd be so boring. I could get hit by a bus tomorrow or die in 60 years of old age. I might as well not give a fuck. What's the point of life if you're just giving too many fucks, dude? So there you go. That's why I say weird shit. Because, I don't know, makes it interesting for the rest of you. You'd be all, you'd be all so bored if I didn't say weird shit. What do you have to talk about? Anyways, that's it. Yay! What up, Arctic? All right, that's the stream.
That's not the stream. That's the end of this segment. I'm going to take the suit off. I'm going to unsweat. I'll be right back. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of gaming for like an hour or so. And then that'll be stream, all right?